Aim for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank. Members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Planning something fun for your office, family, or friends? Joe's Karting is for you. Take a break. Come to Joe's to race, relax, and recharge. Great for team building. Ditch the speaker and burn some rubber. Trust us. Joe says you'll leave motivated. Joe's Karting race packages range from providing simple stress relief races to the real deal race experience. Check us out at joeskarting.com. Remember, go to Joe's. Your place to race. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. A crossover is... Crossover dribble. Same for the crossover. Kyrie Irving. Crossover in the lane. One of the most famous crossovers of all time. Behind the back, an ankle breaker on Chris Paul. Crossover. 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 Crossover continues to evolve. All right, Crossover was powered by Every Little Country Repair and Omaha at EverLittleCountry.com. Everybody enjoy the Final Four last night, the I, National Championship game? I loved it. I loved it. I stayed all the way until the end and through the end of uh, uh, One Shining Moment. And then it was a chef show. Something about that. Oh, something about chefs. Yes. Uh, 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 David Let- No, uh, stupid uh, uh, pet tricks. David Letterman. Yeah. Like the show to that the was host? right on afterwards? No, it was like a pe- it was like a it was a cooking, cooking show. show. Yeah. Yeah. It was like uh what channel did you chef? watch on? It's uh I was on TBS. Yeah, I was on T N T. Oh, I must have been too because oh. the chef show came on. TBS went too. right to uh Stupid Petrix and David Letterman and Sarah Silverman. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh yeah, mine went straight to it was like uh, elite cooking. Was what yeah, it yeah, it like was that. like a cooking yeah. competition. Well, at least one shining moment on both stations was wrong. Bum, 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 bum. Now we have to find out how common that is for them to take things that aren't from I, the NCAA tournament. Now, obviously, I've never noticed it before. It's CBS, but again, so it's not been a team. I they think. were like, let's have a foot, let's have footage of Nebraska of more than once. Like, how did that get into an editing bay? Right. I, yeah, that one shining moment is not as good as it used to be. It's because the song sucks. It's no, 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 no. That is definitely not the reason why. Yeah, the song is every bit there. as good as it has always been. Could be a contributor. Wow, you guys are haters. Hey, and you and I need to stick together. It's, de- it's because depressing I've been after a happy fight. moment. There's no reason to. It's bad television. It's a what? It just feels depressing. It's like the, here's all these sad people and the way their season came well, up. No, short, it's a, it, it's, here's this one team because there's only one. Do you remember there's only one? Hey guys, there's only one. It's the chain. thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. It's the whole thing. It's all the emotions wrapped into one. It's both sad and happy at the same time. It makes you feel things. That's what's so good about one shining moment. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of one shining moment, just not the song. Yep, bingo. Uh, I I think it's the opposite. Like one, the song is incredible. I'll listen to the song. The song is on my Spotify playlist. I'm I'll sorry ju- to hear that. It'll pop up in like June, and I'll be like, hell yes, time to sing along with <laughs> Luther Vandross here. This is exciting. Um, but like the execution of it has been weird over the last couple of years. I think the clips are too quick. It, it kind of feels like somebody did it like two weeks prior, and it's like, let's just mail this thing, and we're ready to get the stream. Let's just let this time of year. Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba. 
I mean, yes, you, there you, are. you can hear radios clicking off. The You're right running for your lives. <laughs> You're a shooting star. All right, we may have uh, we may have the bottom of this. Uh, why uh, why Juwan Gary is in the NCAA? Yes, why why why? Now this is just a theory, possibly. Thank you, Adam. He said the video of Juwan Gary in the red jersey was played as a promo leading into that game. Oh. My guess is they grabbed it from the promo when putting together one shining moment and didn't think anything of it. Weak. Weak. Okay. Well, I mean, y- that game aired on CBS. Yeah. So, I mean, it's in, it, they have it. It's not like they grabbed it. From, but they but, used some stuff. But you from guys it. know that we're the only place that caught that last night. Definitely. And the only reason oh, we sure. did is because you had to stop or go back and go, wait, Nebraska was wearing white. Uh huh. And Jawan Gary, that is Jawan Gary. At first, I. The first run through, I thought it was New Mexico, and then I was like, in my head, I was like, no, that, that, that's, that's Jawan Gary. That's Jawan Gary. They didn't, um, they didn't use a clip of Tomanaga crying, which is actually I pretty, they would. pretty surprising. Well, they also didn't use a lot of teams. No, yeah. that's no. Yeah, because did, every did everybody ten- get an appearance? Every Tennessee clip was from the Creighton game too, which I thought was weird. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Like they didn't grab any of their. First two round games, it was just the Creighton. Game. I thought they'd use uh, for Creighton. I thought they used Baylor's shot That's against what I Oregon. Said. Um, instead, they did the locker room, which was nice. So I, I thought Jimmy and I were talking about that. And I thought it's not one of like an iconic shot. Like it's not super difficult, and the you know wasn't to win the game. Yeah, I thought they may have would would have used the Jason Green dunk, Jason, or the Colt Brenner three. That was the other thing that I thought was a possibility. Yeah. Oh, that would have been funny if they would have put Kalk Brenner three. In, instead, Kalk Brenner made it just in the foreground of a Dalton Connect uh, play. Now, the best way to probably with what's going on in college basketball is they finish and like the the wipe is to Calipari walking his dog. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the off season, and then it just the, the, at the end it just says, "Welcome to the transfer portal, everyone." And then he goes into a Dr. Pepper Fansville commercial. You'll see, you'll see all these people on the same video next year, except for they'll all be wearing different jerseys. We, we were debating this percentage that Cal stays at Kentucky at this point because nothing's been announced yet. Um, I, it seems very small, but it, right, but it would be hilarious. It would be the funniest thing. Yeah, he's like, I got a question. Just Lexington, we'll see you next November. I got a question about uh, Cal's uh, dog stroller. Yep. We what's, all do. What's we all have the, questions. Uh, what's the deal? What's okay, so as a you and I are non-dog owners. Yes. I think it's, you know, if the dog gets tired, you can put it in the stroller. And the dog may have like a health issue. So you walk it. Yeah. Leash or non-leash. And then it hops but in. But then, like, there are some corgis that don't have the same length of legs. And so they can't walk a long like distance. A lot of so maybe you pick it up and you put it in the stroller for a little bit. Josh, you don't own a dog, do you? I do not know, so. but it is on a shorter walk. It is to s- it I is said. a little bit uh, startling to see a man pushing a stroller with no baby, and the dog is walking next to him. Yes, yeah, and he's like, "Come on, dog!" Yeah, not a great look. <laughs> it's funny. It was really, really. Funny. I, I thought it was very uh, surprising that he chose that day to go out on that walk yeah. and didn't expect somebody to come up and stick a camera in his. Really? Face. Well, uh, it's just a guy going on a walk. I would definitely tell my wife, "I can't leave the house, honey." <laughs> They're going to mob me. You, uh, I'm surprised the guy wasn't right outside of his front door. Yeah, they're better off. He's better off going on the walk than his wife going on the walk. And then they yeah. bombard her with the cameras. Hey, maybe just they moving to Arkansas. Well, I don't, hey, I don't think they were hiding much because there was the story earlier in the day that players were going to come to his house for a meeting. <laughs> and oh, the meeting he was actually, at his house. So he actually, well, he can't um, be bothered to leave. When, they, when they got their NCAA berth, they did it from his house. Like all the media came to I his house. I remember that. Yes. I remember that. And that neighborhood, which. We have people that listen from Lexington, Kentucky, or Louisville. They might be like financial. That well. is, that's like that row of houses is where all the millionaires live in Lexington. Cool. So it might not be so odd to see Calipari walking his dog. But, you know, good job on the Kentucky media for stalking him. Yeah. Awesome. Just perfect. Appreciate that. Perfect college basketball. You know how that conversation went, though. Is that John Calipari with a dog stroller? And what recruits are he texting right now? <laughs> yeah, I thought that now, was the interesting thing. That he's he now, out in his so, so we are going to, in the fall into the winter, have a 12-team college football playoff. People forget. Will we be emotional enough about a 12-team college football playoff that we could have an equivalent one-shining moment? 
I don't think you no. could. I don't think you could do it. I, like, are we gonna get? Are we gonna get all feely with the college football playoff or no? Not, with, like with not the departure the of this version of the no, college just football? just like you know, like we get emotional for three weeks. Are we going to get emotional with college football no, for no, three weeks? There's, it's a great question, Gary, but here's the deal. There's no emotion attached to college football anymore. It's all it's all garbage. It's all <laughs> it's it's all money. Some would greed. say college basketball is better than it, college football. It's all money and greed. That's all it is now. College basketball still has its pure it, its purity a little bit because it has the NCAA tournament and it has things like Luther Vandross Luther Vandross's one shining moment. But you guys want to take it away for some reason because you don't like the song. Give me a break. Uh, also, if you, <laughs> if the first round game of the playoffs are as uh, lopsided as they have been in the uh, fourteen playoff, I don't think it's going to have a whole lot of emotion behind it. Yeah, yeah. but think about it. Like it, nationally, we just went through a three week run. I don't think the tournament was very good on the men's side, and so one shining moment matched the enjoyment of the tournament. Um, but in college football, like, will it be nationally? Will we get like super excited as a country for the college football playoff? Yeah, I think it's so. the biggest yeah, sport. Absolutely. It's the most money. Will we? I mean, yeah, I, I don't think we have to be like super uh, emotionally attached to it. Like yet, considering opening day the first in mid December, are you going to stop what you're doing? Yeah, are I we going? Is someone going to go? Man, I think this should be a national holiday. I mean, don't we do that? Even though it's on a Saturday, we do don't we do that playoffs. for the for the semifinals right now? I mean, it's like yeah, this is college football semifinal day. You know, now we de- we. To, to your point, are going to do a bracket? Like to your point, <laughs> that's funny. To your point, a little <laughs> bit like it. We don't have the emotional attachment to it because it hasn't been around long enough. Like for the NCAA tournament, <laughs> it's we have we have the Thursday and the Friday, and those are the best two days of the year. And you put everything aside, and then you you go with that. We don't have that yet for college football, but maybe if we do the same thing for like we just consider doing the same thing for like four days in a row in this world of college football, that we could actually grow some emotional attachment to it. But nah, like I said, it's all about money and greed. So we got to change things around all the time. And so nobody grows an emotional attachment. See, to it's that. too bad they can't stretch it out to play like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Because I think stretching it out one game a day, like that opening round, would add to it. But you're not mm. touching Sunday. Isn't one of those days there's like an NFL game on the same day? And uh, I believe that's Saturday. 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 They're, going up, they're going up against the NFL. Yeah. But okay. So, so it'll just be a day where we can sit on our couch and just... You just watch really football. get sloppy. No, I like I like the idea of all the games in one day, or okay. some of the game, most of the games now, in one day. Back to makes a must watch. Will, will will we do a bracket and be excited about a bracket? <laughs> we don't do that with football. We don't even do that in the NFL, where it's like the the only time I you would. see a bracket is on the TV. Like nobody like prints one out. Like it, you just never see that. Yeah, they could do like a bracketology show. You know, a uh, who's gonna be the who's gonna be the Joey brackets of college football now. Uh, uh, Dana O'Neill. D- Dana O'Neill. Okay. Perfect. Great. Isn't that a basketball writer? Uh, no, she covers the uh, college football play. No, uh, uh what? No, uh, what's her yeah, name? Yeah, Dana O'Neill is a. Basketball uh, she writer. is ACC. Um, she covers uh the college football playoff committee all the time. Heather Dinich. Heather Dinich. Heather Dinich. That is our new college football bracketologist. Exciting! What a great career path. The first ever. College football. The only, the only that there won't be there won't be the drama of a bracket being revealed. Maybe a spot or two, but it'll become pretty apparent that okay, this is the number one seed, the number two seed, mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. Yeah, you know, you, you you can't create that with a twelve team field. But we'll have a bracket, right? We'll you'll go into bars and they'll have the bracket up. Yeah, sure, right? And with the Bud Light logo or whatever, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. think so. I don't think that's going to happen. I went to Ameristar yesterday. Yeah, the reason that I went we do the sports book yesterday, they got the big bracket right there as you walk into the sports book. The reason that we don't do it in football in, in the NFL is because they reseed. Like no, it's hard. That's it's, a good. Point. It's hard yeah. to tell who's going to play who in the next round. If there's one upset, it just throws the whole thing off. So it's not really a bracket. It's just kind of we move on to the next thing. In this, it will be a true yeah. bracket, right? Um. So I don't know. Maybe maybe it gets a little. Bit- Closer to that like, conversation, we like the we like the video of uh, the teams that have the bracket in their locker room and they get to slam the name. Yeah. Will we get that in football? One shot. Oh, even definitely. though definitely. even yeah. even though it is still kind of jarring to watch all these NCAA ads and there is no FBS football. I know, it's awesome. Like they're showing all these different sports in these great moments. There is no FBS football. That's right, because that's not theirs. Let the football people do the football things. That's why all the football people have this great idea. Let's expand the tournament to 100 million teams. I wonder whose idea this is. It's almost like it's the football people. It almost feels like like money money and greed. Yes. 
Yeah, don't listen to them. You don't have to listen to them. It's fine. We have a perfect tournament. It's great. We got a great finale last night. And uh, now we're on to on to baseball. Yeah, if anything, shrink the tournament. Make it break, get rid of the play-in games. Like just give me a tournament. Just give me a bracket on selection Sunday. You had gone Finalized. like 15 minutes without something. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, Jimmy. Long stretch. Speaking of this. <laughs> yeah, pro wrestling? So let's yeah, talk about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I want to make sure I get this. I almost lost this bet. I want to make sure I get this right. So the take was that everybody loves pro wrestling. Everybody. Ooh. Okay, so we already have a problem. But okay. let's let's Go continue. Ahead. Let's continue. But everybody loves pro wrestling. Yep. Because everyone loved it as a kid. No, and- no, 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 no. You 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 missed the point. Okay, of story. go ahead. Tell Everybody me. loves the art of storytelling, and that's what professional wrestling. Is. Yeah, but uh, okay. ev- everything is everything is storytelling. I don't love everything. I, I disagree with that. I don't think everything is story. Not everything is storytelling done well. And when professional wrestling is storytelling done well, it's the best. It's the it, it is the most paid attention to thing on your timeline. It's definitely not. <laughs> It's definitely not. It listen, WrestleMania was two days ago. It's the it's the number two trend in the world today. Uh, I don't like like in the world. Like this isn't my timeline. This isn't your timeline. It's the number two trend in the world, and there hasn't been a wrestling show in twelve hours. How many how many people watched the WrestleMania? Uh, it was the most watched WrestleMania of all time. How many people watched the WrestleMania? Uh, over I think it was like twenty eight million. Twenty eight million in people. forty in forty eight different countries. Yeah, I don't know that uh, that doesn't seem like everybody to me. I certainly don't care. I don't give a rip about wrestling. I don't care. So I proved your theory wrong right there. I don't like wrestling. I would imagine the Super Bowl has some staying power on social media. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, my argument isn't more people like wrestling than football, though. Okay. That's not the argument. No, your argument is that because your argument is everyone loves wrestling. I'm trying to make I'm, I'm trying to think of a, a, a I'm just stuff, I'm, at I'm some confused point, by at, the take. At some point during your life, did you have a span where you enjoyed some wrestling? Yes. Okay. There you go. So, that's so, kind so of you're saying Jimmy at some is, point you Jimmy loved wrestling. Alluding to. Yes. Okay. So you don't think everybody's had some sort of relationship like that to professional wrestling? Jimmy, at one point in your life, did you like uh, breast milk? No, I don't think I was breastfed. Mm. Did you like, uh, did you like, uh, I mean, the I still like, I still, the ba- I st- baby I st- food in a I jar? Still, I, I still, I still, <laughs> I still like breasts. So did, I guess, <laughs> did you like baby food coming out of a jar? <laughs> did you like applesauce? I, I love, I still love applesauce. Do you not like some of those things anymore? Oh, I haven't, I haven't had baby food in a while. I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> Which so, is odd because you have many babies. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> it's too many. So just because I had a moment, I was Why like, hey, this is kind of cool. What if somebody had a moment was like, I really like cocaine. You know, yeah. they, they, don't, they don't like it anymore. <laughs> so you're saying like, it was cool when Miami Vice was airing. Now, <laughs> eh. I don't think that happens. People tend to like cocaine every time they do it. Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> That's not true. Some people are like, no, thank you. I don't want to do this anymore. Even though uh, I had a period of time where I really loved cocaine. I've never done cocaine. So I can't, I can't, I can't really, can't really give you a comparison there. <laughs> there are so many poll questions out of this yeah. question. Josh, I, I better hear your fingers going. Yeah. <laughs> Do people really like cocaine? Okay. <laughs> but no, so I think that, so I just, once again, I'm trying to get hold this on, straight. Hold, hold so on. the point that you're trying to make is because, because I liked it at one point in my life, that means I still like it. No, Mike, Mike, my, my, what I'm trying to say is it's got enough for everybody that it doesn't make sense for you not to love professional wrestling because it's got, a, it's got the ability to attract every single audience and anybody that gives it, it's, of it gives course it, it has the ability to do so. It doesn't mean everybody loves it. You can't just say unilateral, unilaterally that everybody loves something. Something. Everybody always doesn't like something. Like if there's somebody out there who's like, "World peace, screw that. I don't like that." <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Thanks, Bin Laden. I like uh, war. I'm pro war. <laughs> like, there's save all- that for a drop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hope that doesn't come back to that'll, that'll be that'll be the that'll be the new <laughs> piece, screw that that'll be the new show promo right there. I just yeah, I just like <laughs> it's just too. War. You're casting What's the good for you're casting the net too wide. I think I, I don't I don't disagree with you that there are that there are, are there's reasons why there's people a, would like wrestling. There's an all but to en- say there's that an everyone all loves it because it's this. There's an all encompassing value of professional wrestling that it has the ability for everybody to love it. I don't even get what you're saying. It has the ability for everyone. Everybody has the ability to like this computer. There's some, Do they like it? No, because no. there's not something that's relevant to everybody about that computer. There's something. There's there's been at least one storyline in professional wrestling throughout the the length that's been around since basically since they've had uh, circuses in America that is relatable to somebody. It is no. It is zero percent relatable to me. 
What, I what? don't relate to oily guys. There's oily women. I'm sure, I don't, sure I don't, don't relate to oily sure don't women that. either. I don't relate to oil. <laughs> I don't like when people have oil on their bodies. You know, I'm. Well, you know what I was just about to say. I'm assuming you don't like movies either. But as we've learned from Connor, he, does, Happer, he doesn't. He does really not. Know, he's not of movies, so that might. I be. thought last night I was watching that basketball game, and it lasted two and a half hours. And I was like, "Could you imagine choosing Oppenheimer over this?" I'd watch this game seven hundred times before. I don't, I watched I don't know if you noticed this about the ten guys on the court last night. They're a little bit oily too, so maybe you do relate to oil. That's now. sweat. That's different. Not everybody in pro wrestling uses baby oil. It's not the baby oil. It's it's not exclusively the baby oil. I don't relate to wrestling. I don't understand why you're saying that I do relate to wrestling. Because you literally told us at some point in your life you did. What did you like about it when you watched it? Well, all my friends liked it. At my neighbors okay, who were that children. makes it relatable well, to you. Peer pressure. They don't anymore. <laughs> Nobody in my life likes wrestling. That is not true. I'm in your life. Boom. Josh <laughs> tells me about wrestling. Josh, do I seem to care about it? You at really all? don't. No. I don't. You allow That's... you allow me the space, and I appreciate that. <laughs> kind of want to watch Happer watch wrestling. Man. I'm just I'm, <laughs> I'm just confused about the take. That's WWE. All. Next time you're in town, we need you to get Connor Happer a take. Like we and all I, have... and I need his. I need his. I need his response to it. We could vlog time. it. You could. Nick, get the camera. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't. I don't think. What if I'll they enjoy sent you? To, what if they sent you to Vegas to watch it? I feel like you would do that. I would go to Vegas for anything. <laughs> that doesn't count. As, as we've learned over the last that, two weeks, that doesn't count. How about that, Morgan Wallen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I Speaking tried to tell you. Speaking of steel <laughs> chairs, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I, I still don't even know what the take is. I'm very confused about. I'm this. confused how you don't understand too. So I guess we'll just meet at a stalemate there. So everybody, so wrestling is, is relatable to everybody. Wrestling is relatable to everybody. Yes, and so like, is is football relatable to everybody? Is basketball relatable to everybody? Well, you started the debate off with saying that the Super Bowl would have something to say about that, so I guess you've already answered your own question. Is 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 baseball related to everybody? I think I think baseball could be. Not everybody loves baseball, which is amazing to me, by the way. Not everybody mm. lo- like just because it it, it might appeal, it might have a chance to appeal to you, doesn't mean that everybody. Li- I'm just I don't know. I don't I don't get it. I don't, I don't, I still don't understand in response to that. So when, when the world series happens or a big play happens, you don't get the response and the drawback that wrestling does. Cause maybe the one thing that wrestling does better than anything is it does have the ability to lose interest with people like, like you're saying here, but it's, it's one of those things that it has the ability to draw your interest back to. And I don't think you could say that about anything else. Like think about anything that you've lost interest in that could do something to pull you back in. It feels like wrestling is one of those one of very few things that has the ability to do that, and I think that's because people fall in love with it. Why do you feel? Why, why do you feel that way? Like I don't know. I, okay, we don't have to. Okay, because I, <laughs> I I don't know what's going on really, but I've noticed my brain is sort of broken <laughs> on this on this take. But um, yeah, I don't I don't care about wrestling at all. Okay, and I think you live in your own bubble a little bit, and you're like, wow, everybody's talking about this, but in my thing, nobody was talking about it. It was the number two trend in the world, though. Like, yeah, but I that's not like, a my opinion. You that's, can you that's can a choose to, you could choose to live in whatever. If like there are people out there, Jimmy, that's hard to believe. There are people <laughs> who just do not care about sports at all. They, they 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 there are people who don't care about politics at all. And so I'm those, one of those people. Those people meet each other in the real world, and they have no idea what they're what each of them are talking about. And like pro wrestling doesn't relate to the person who doesn't care about sports at all. Like I, I don't. But it, it, it you, not, neither is any. You're sport. trying to compare pro wrestling to other sports, though. It's it's. I'm not. It's I not, don't know what you're saying. That's my problem. Yeah, and I, I guess that's why we'll just never get an answer to this question. Then. <laughs> just so confused. I I don't know how I could help you, bud. Okay. I tried. I tried my hardest. How about that eclipse? Okay. Yeah. I guess I'm the dumb one. Um, the eclipse was great. What's up with people saying that they don't like the eclipse? It's a scientific phenomenon. What the hell? I have. <laughs> <laughs> the eclipse doesn't. Hey. The eclipse is not. I, uh, I didn't hate it. I just. I didn't have any interest in seeing it. I don't know. I. I, I get it. I get why it's a phenomenon. I get why it's relatable to people. I just. I don't know. I, I've seen one. It was fine. <laughs> he's sh- he's literally shaking. <laughs> I yeah, I, I, I thought I, it was cool. I thought it was cool. I think I think yeah. it is cool. I just don't have any interest. I get why people are interested by it. I just uh, one thing on that. Um, you know how yesterday we were talking about some schools were not letting kids out to go enjoy it. Yeah, did people pivot? 
so I, I heard more stories of kids being allowed to go out because good. Like I have one of my memories is when I was in school, we did the piece of paper that you poked a hole in it and you, yeah. you know, on the ground you could see it. Yeah. Like I still remember that. Um, but they're the being sued because kids would look into the sun and they may lose their eyesight. That'll never happen. Like there are some schools that that was a general concern. And I'm thinking, why don't you just do like a permission slip? Like yeah, we that's have this, what, that's what we oh, have this five year old that's good gave the me. next the next time that your kid sees a eclipse, we hope they're here. We'll be in twenty years. I'll tell you this: so I, it's a field trip. If I was a principal and I was responsible for all these children, and I had to ensure to the parents that each and every one of them will guaranteed not look at the sun during the eclipse, I'd be terrified. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah, that's I'd, what it is. It's I'd, a loss. I'd, I'd be very scared. Hey, because they go, don't look into the sun. What did I do when I first got to where I went to look at it yesterday? I looked up into the sun. Yeah. Is it happening it. yet? Of course. <laughs> Which is why the number one Google search in, in the world today was, why do my eyes hurt? <laughs> so wait a minute. So your five-year-old had to have a permission slip to do it? Yeah. Okay. Which is the Good. ultimate get Good out of jail school. free card, right? Yeah. It was, it, yeah, it was great that they did that. Meanwhile, Lincoln Public Schools, no, nobody can watch it. We're scared of science and lawsuits. Probably more of that second part. Probably. Are we talking yeah. 2020 or are we talking 2024? 2024. Okay. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad the kids got out of America school. got mooned yesterday. It was fine. Yeah. I don't think I would watch yeah. it on TV. Um, and I don't, there were a lot of people that had like, were emotionally overcome. I think so, it's cool. If that you're in totality, I A lot of people see, cried. Yeah, I think it's cool that we all had something that we that we we all had sort of like a common interest. You know, were you back yet? When it happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in my backyard putting on my bunny fences because my bu- the bunnies are invading my yard again. Mm. Trying to not make my grass nice this year. So I was out there. I was like, "Well, it's getting darker." Oh and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> then I checked, and it was one fifty-five or whatever. I was like, "Wow, the wind it got a little I bit cooler." Eclipse time. The wind yeah. picked up. Yeah. My uh, my neighbor was out on her front, uh, on her driveway, just sitting there in a lawn chair, just looking up at the sun. <laughs> no glasses on. <laughs> no, she had. <laughs> okay, she had the eclipse. I was like, that feels on. problematic. I was like, this is just <laughs> such a funny thing. This is this is a funny thing that we're all doing. It did look really cool outside yesterday, though, with a little bit of a the uh, like beige tint that it gave off. Yeah, it was like a tinted window yeah. for yeah. the day. It so, looked really cool. Uh, you know, like in Ohio, they had pictures of the Cincinnati ballpark in Cleveland. Who will be the first player to go on the IL because they burn their retina <laughs> by looking into look, the sun? Don't look. Don't look. I wonder. I wonder if that's the case but, today. But is we, that a finable offense? We didn't get full totality here in 17, like because of the like some place of the cloud cover. I swear, yeah. But in Ohio, where at those two ballparks, like in Cleveland, it went dark. Like they there's a shot from Niagara Falls. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It was much darker in 2017. Um like you said, because of the cloud cover, but also we got more coverage yeah. in 2017. I thought it looked cooler. What were we just an 83 percenter this year? 80, I, yeah, I, 80, 80. Was it that high? Percent. I thought it was lower than that. It was 80 some percent this year. Um, but we were almost like we were in the path of totality pretty much in uh, in 2017. Most, most of the Midwest was this year, though, too, right? Like just east of us, most of it got. Yeah, I kind of crossed yeah. Texas yeah. up northeast. The, pa- the flow was different in 17. Yes, they cr- So there's one. There's a specific place in uh in southern missouri where it crossed both and they were both in the path of totality like where the x where the x crosses people have conspiracy theories about that one but yeah also people got married in arkansas yeah a lot of people why not on a monday i thought nick castellanos would hit a home run yesterday (laughs) he went over five he did not ouch uh that would have been a good uh prop bet yeah, that's why I said yesterday when I when I was like, oh, here there's an eclipse today. Let's see what Nick Castellanos to hit a home run is plus five sixty. <laughs> so I took it and uh, did not profit. <laughs> did not profit. What was the highlight of this Vegas trip? Or am I? I don't want to step on the shows. That's what we're going to talk about. Uh, probably not. I don't. Uh, let's see. What was the highlight? Did you guys go tickle chains? <laughs> no, not this time. Not this time. You know, just a lot of walking and where'd you guess that? Seeing uh, the MGM Grand. That little corner is a lot of fun. Um, MGM Grand, New York, New York. Yeah, it's a gigantic, it's a gigantic casino. You feel like you're there, but you're not. Like you know, it takes it takes a half hour to just get outside from your room. Which yeah, is it's hilarious. Um, Did you do the roller coaster in New York, New York? I never have, never have. 
Yeah, uh, when we were out there in July for the Crawford fight, they, they did this cool thing where they put us in a room right next to the drop, the roller coaster ah! that stays open till two o'clock. That's fun. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Don't, don't recommend. Did you give that. me any mixtapes on the bridge? No, <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to throw five bucks at a guy just to bring you one back. Did he tell you he was from Council Bluffs? I uh, I did not. No, um, um, they they sounded great though. They sounded like there was some good. Well, stuff so they on. must be back because they were. There was an attempt to kick them off that bridge. Oh yeah, they'll like. Um, so this guy comes up to me, or it comes up to the group of us, and he was like, "What? You don't want this because because you're white?" And I was like. <laughs> I was you should, like, you should just looked at him and said yes. Well, walked away. So I just laughed. I was like, oh, nice. And then yeah, I I, I kept walking away. It was, <laughs> it was a really good guilt trip. Yes, it is. It's really gonna make me feel bad for you. I'm sure he gets a lot of people on that. He's like, well, I'm not racist here. <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> here's here's ten bucks. Take whatever you want. Well, next time you'll be better prepared for a comeback. <laughs> Yeah, that is that is. And then your exit though. plan got to uh, got to watch the uh, final four games at the the swim uh, stadium swim again. So yeah. that was really cool and uh, quite the experience. Do you have a, a preference, Fremont Street versus the Strip? Yeah, I like the Strip, but really? that's that circa is really quite the deal. Uh, I, I imagine in the next several years there will be more high end high end casinos that will move out that way or build out that way but do you think with the same concept no, no i mean no it's like the first thing is the draw right like you have yeah. to figure out okay how do we get people here and that is the thing and so now that they got people there or are getting people there I think, other people can build off it yeah i think yeah. so i think it's kind of basic. i, I of prefer that. fremont street just because the walking is just it's so much easier there's just you don't it doesn't take you forever to get anywhere it's easier to get in and out of cars and stuff too but it's a little cheaper. It's also very much cheaper. <laughs> See, that's what they are. Um, you're Mr. Grow Omaha over there. Yeah. Is Let It Fly going to keep the pool on the roof? Ooh. I mean, that's a really big expense for not being able to use it certain times of the year. There you go. We're, we're, we're talking. I mean, future sports book, a mini version. Oh, good one. Good one. Interesting. Out of that 204th and Pacific there? Yes. The old uh, barrel and vine or whatever it was. Yep. Where they tried to be Miami and Omaha. Which is that work. what it was called? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Two very relatable places, Omaha and Miami. They're sure. The exact same. There's something for everybody. But I haven't heard of the cocaine. Keep the, keep the pool. <laughs> I wonder. I, I mean, it's just a big pool. You can fill up the pool. They got cabanas. Maybe you fill it up with. Uh, well, they got a bar. They had a bar up on that, that upper level where the pool was and they had all the cabanas. Maybe you fill it up with balls and make it a ball pit. Big ball pit. Million dollar idea. <laughs> I don't know. Anybody? I'm Big just, ball just pit? Just hearing about the, uh, the cleanliness of the ball pit. Well, yeah. What's the pool like? That's well, a good at point. Least you have, That's like, a really good point. Like the chlorine that kills some stuff. Yeah, you could put chlorine <laughs> no, you in the ball pit. <laughs> How about the little foam ones where you could like jump in from 30 feet up and then they drop you in there. You're like, well, I prefer the ball pit. Okay. I don't know the foam doesn't do anything for me. I'm fine with the ball pit. You get too. stuck in the foam. You know what we when we're kids we don't ever think about how like disgusting bounce houses are yeah. Oh, yeah. until you become an adult and somebody goes hey have you ever taken a black light into a bounce house and I'm like no why no. would I want why to I? no 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 you'll never like, get back you on see, do you know what kids do in these there's just some things that you have to be willing to accept about going to various places yeah, kids, you can stray away from them if you want and people, uh, you have to understand that not everybody likes Vegas but it's a horrible disgusting dirty place which and, is why some people do like it <laughs> yeah exactly but you have a lot of germs. That, that you have to deal with with your while you're there and sometimes you just have to be willing to say you know what i'm in this i watched a grown man sneeze directly into like a 22 year old girl's face nice uh, in, in uh, new york city in, or? Ve in vegas just oh, and did walk in here said excuse me like right after he did it and i was like no that's not how that works dude <laughs> what should he have done <laughs> covered his mouth <laughs> not and probably anything else did you did you go police on him did you say sir i I lost it. I did. I whoa, I, whoa. I, I, I was just like, man, that's not okay. <laughs> really? You approached him? I was, like, I was sitting at the table. We, we oh. were sitting. We were all playing blackjack. And this guy just turns directly into this girl's face and just sneezes without zero <laughs> wow. attempt to do the, the, the vampire cover, the, <gasps> put his face in his. Like, I that's can see awesome. if you got to put like your face in your shirt and like it slips out of your hand. You sneeze. Like, okay. But, like, he just, Classic like, Vegas. Turned right into her face. Projectile <laughs> sneeze. Jack, Jack, Jack. 
<laughs> you just stay away at that point. Yeah, I was it's like, I, that I, guy's I, a wild card. I literally cashed my chips out. I was like, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, uh, covered a lot there. Yeah, we we did. We did cover a lot. More to cover in the next uh, three and a half hours. Hey, yeah, I hear we'll, you we'll guys are we'll uh, doing someday. the Omaha Craig game tonight. Yeah, I'll see you guys there. Nice. Oh, no smoking. No smoking. Excellent. Yeah. I haven't been up in the press box, the towel yet. No are you going to be able to hear us? Uh, no. You guys are further down from okay, that's good. the game ops room. That's good. Um, but the there is no windows that open. Oof. Oh, that's a tough hang for me. Can I go on the roof? Yeah, no. There's the little like DJ area right outside the press box. You can probably yeah, see. no, you want to be in. The booth is nice, but the windows don't open. That seems like a structural yeah, flaw. You know, sometimes when they, <laughs> when they build like for radio booths, they don't think ahead. And that wasn't discovered until I went and did a game there. And I'm like, hey, where's the window? And they're like, what window? Oh, it doesn't open. So it'll just be there won't be any noise at all on the broadcast except for our um, voices i think uh get some have cool a, air conditioning sounds okay that's <laughs> yeah. good that helps that helps all right exciting very very excited see to, at six the weather's to gonna be great yeah i heard Enjoy the game boys it'll be great all Thanks right you give me a night off that is the crossover powered by ever level <laughs> concrete repair in omaha at everlevelconcrete.com it's tuesday we'll start things off next that's the crossover the connor happer show is next on 1620 the zone Previously on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. Would you rather have to eat one hot dog every morning immediately after waking up for the rest of your life or every time you touch a piece of paper, it cuts you and draws blood? I would or rather eat, eat a hot dog oh, every morning. Give me that dog. Kevin says yes, wiping after using the bathroom. Oh, Toilet oh. paper. Ouch. Unsportsmanlike Conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. Weekdays 2 to 6 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. A beautiful spring day on the way. Tuesday, expect mostly sunny skies, wind out of the west, just 5 to 15 miles per hour with highs in the upper 60s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV News Watch 7. I see the future in our public school classrooms every day. I'm Jenny Benson, president of the Nebraska State Education Association. I also see how critically important parent and community support is to our students' success. Support your public schools, get involved, form a business school partnership, or become a school volunteer. Great schools and great communities work hand in hand. Sponsored by the Nebraska State Education Association, aired by the Nebraska Broadcasters Association in this station. Email any of our shows anytime into the Equitable Bank inbox. At Equitable, we take banking personally. For me, John at 1620thezone.com. The Equitable Bank inbox from 1620 The Zone. Temperatures are warm and Omaha Maverick baseball is hot. The Mavericks have won their last two conference series and lead the Summit League in conference wins. Tonight, the Mavs take on crosstown rival Creighton at Tal Anderson Field. Don't miss this classic matchup. It's $2 Tuesdays when all Pepsi products and Bush Light cans are $2 when gates open until the third inning. And this weekend, Maverick baseball plays South Dakota State. Get your tickets for all four games by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash tags. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. 
Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. It's the Connor Happer Show. Are we sure we want to do this? Uh, could you, like, make an announcement that we're ready? It's the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Hey, welcome in. Happy Tuesday. It's the Connor Happer Show. You're on 1620 The Zone and on 1620thezone.com. Connor Happer, Josh Johnson with you. Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm excited. I got takes. I got stuff to talk about today. The, okay. big, the big East runs college basketball. College basketball runs through the Big East. Isn't it time to deploy to, to doing that today? retroactively deploy everybody's uh narratives? Why did the Big East only get three teams in the NCAA tournament? Mm. It's ridiculous. They won the national championship. They won the national champion. Won the NIT. They won the NIT. They won everything. Untouchable was Seton Hall in the NIT. And that conference only got three teams in. Kind of ridiculous. Kind of ridiculous. Anyway, welcome to the show. I'm using a little bit of sarcasm there. Uh, Alan Bell will join today at 1130. We will uh, finish up the college basketball season with him. Maybe get to some football topics. And, of course, the Masters is this weekend. Uh, very happy with my past self because when I, when you, Josh, you know, kind of put me over the edge and said, you need to order this taste of the masters thing right now. Otherwise you won't do it. You will slash forget. I know my guy. Uh, and you were absolutely right. And so that day when I did that was probably about a month ago, something like that, maybe at the start of the tournament, I was like, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to remember that I did this on like the day it shows up. And they sent me an email yesterday and they were like, it's coming tomorrow. And I was like, whoa, Number one, the Masters is this week. Sweet. <laughs> Number two, I get all that food and all the cool Masters cups and the uh, the azaleas and the and the and the pimento cheeses and the barbecue and the chips. I'm very excited about it. Hell yeah! So that'll arrive. Uh, that'll arrive tomorrow at my house. One of the greatest things that past me has ever done for future Connor Happer. You did it a day. Like you only had one day buffer before you would have, it would have not mi- gone here this week. Yeah, yeah. Josh, thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. Uh, Jacob Bigelow will join at one o'clock. The coaching carousel, aka Bigelow time, has finally arrived. Uh, we had some dominoes fall over the weekend, and which dominoes will fall out of potentially John Calipari moving over to Arkansas? Uh, we'll get that and uh, some Nebraska ball as they got a new uh, transfer portal guy from North Dakota State yesterday and Andrew Morgan. So uh, all that coming up with Bigelow at one o'clock. That is the lineup powered by the referees at John Higgins Weather Guard. Would love it if you guys got in touch with the show for 291-1620 on the 42 degrees, the source hotline. Uh, you can email Connor or Josh O at 1620thezone.com on the Equitable Bank inbox. Give us a call. Send us a text 402-951-1620 on the 42 degrees the source hotline and we say good morning to our youtube streaming audience today hi hello everybody we are back aren't you glad to see my happy face yeah i really am thank you josh i appreciate it although i i did listen for a couple minutes on the plane yesterday Ooh. and josh you were talking about wrestling i was i was i was like what's this guy talking about and then the internet didn't really work very well on the plane and then i shut it off imagine that it's it's really amazing how that works. But I am happy to report that on my Southwest Airlines flight yesterday back from Las Vegas, none of the engine cowlings fell off and none of the doors flew okay, off either. That's good. That's good. And it was a generally pretty safe flight. I say generally for this reason, um, uh, when we were about to start our descent back into uh, lovely Omaha, Nebraska, it became apparent that there was a man who was having some sort of an, a medical issue Mm -hmm. on the plane and what you don't want to see as a passenger of the plane uh, on the plane is the flight attendants 
begin to move in sort of purposeful ways. Sure. Um, you also don't want to see that flight attendant pick up that phone, you know, at the front there. Right. And, you know, they, they, they're kind of all moving around. They're trying to communicate with each other. I'm like, oh, this is not what I want at this moment. And there was a man, uh, you know, five or six rows ahead of me who I, now I don't have full confirmation on this because I didn't actually I didn't I didn't see it with my with my eyes. But the way that everybody was reacting led me to believe that he probably had a little it, he did some overindulging. Uh, maybe the night before. Okay. And then decided to hop on a plane back to Omaha and the, uh, the roller coaster ride of the bumps flying over the Rocky mountains did not sit quite well with him. That tracks. And, um, and so the flight attendant gets over the deal and she's like, Hey, is there any medical people on board? Um, and you know, I think because of this, we got a little bit of an expedited, uh, descent and entry into nice. Omaha, cut some people in line, Good. got that guy off the plane, and got us all out of there uh, like a half hour early. It was amazing. It's amazing what they could do if they just try a little harder. There's a little <laughs> urgency. It's fantastic. But it was safe, so that's good. Have you thought of just asking if we can go first? Uh, right. It's like, can I cut these people in line? <laughs> sure. Why not? I don't see why not. Uh, so that's uh, that, was, that was yesterday via plane travel for me. Didn't get to see the eclipse from there. That happened by the time I was home. Which I love the eclipse, by the way. We do eclipse eclipse take right off the right off the bat here. Let's do it. Hey, the eclipse is cool, guys. It Get is. over it. Why do we have to be cynical about everything? Why not in this world where we could all come together for a common cause? We're all experiencing some version of an eclipse yesterday. It's kind of cool. It doesn't happen very often. All right. And no, it happens more than you might like to think, even though. Like every time it happens, I'll be like, this won't happen for the rest of your lifetime. But then there's like a different version of it that'll happen in like right. six years, which will be the case again this time. And that's okay. And we'll all get prepared for it again. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world that every decade we could all come together and experience something together and say, wow, that's cool. And you get to see who's an idiot by looking at the sun, which is awesome. You get to see who really, really cares about science and stuff like that because they'll drive into the path of totality. And you'll get to see people who are just like, yeah, I, I, I think this is a cool science experiment. It's, I think it's amazing how they can, you know, predict it to the exact mile, to the exact minute, to the exact mm -hmm. second of when it's going to happen, what's going to happen. I think that part of it's cool. And so we all, as a nation, enjoyed it yesterday, except for the people who want to be just overly cynical about everything or like, ah, oh, this sucks. Actually, we talked. What's wrong to, with you people? We talked to get Sam happy, yesterday. put a smile on. Uh, Sam McEwen and you know asked him if he was excited for it and he went yeah I saw the last one I was like oh <laughs> no you don't have to be excited for it I wasn't excited for it like I said I was doing yard work out in my backyard it's not like I was sitting there with my lawn chair with my telescope out or anything like that I wasn't excited for it but I I would like to acknowledge that it happened and I like I said I thought it was I mean it's not clearly every day that the sun goes in front of the moon and it gets dark at two o'clock in the afternoon. You don't think that's weird. I do. I think that's cool. Yeah. I, I thought a newsman like Sam would appreciate it, but I guess it does. I guess that is probably if he goes out and looks at it, 10, 15 minutes where he's not working and yeah. that probably bothers Sam. <laughs> yeah. That guy gets after it. Does. There was a Husker football practice this morning. Did you see Danny throw it? Danny I, Dimes is what they're calling him. I, Josh, have been hearing very good things about our young Daniel. Daniel, my brother. He uh, apparently is uh, taking to the situation quite well over there. Slinging it. Yeah, he's slinging it around, which is, uh, which is sort of interesting. So um, we'll have some takeaways from practice if anybody... Has him today on the show, and uh, I, I can't remember which coaches are talking today. I think originally it was supposed to be Rule, and maybe Rule's not talking anymore. That kind of got lost in translation over he the He talked weekend. enough the last time. He talked. He loves saying stuff, doesn't he? Or in a good way. I like that he likes to say stuff. Seen that KETV logo all over the NFL reporters uh, feeds today. Here's what I want to do, by the way. I want... Oh, really? What are they tweet? What well, are the, what's the NFL community saying? Well, Matt Rule said that I just... I can't believe that Bill Belichick was available, wanted to work, and nobody hired him. Oh, he did say that. Yeah. Gosh, there's stuff that happens in his press conferences that 
like all of a sudden, oh, here's the Carolina Panthers fans. They're going to grab this and, and kind of run with it. It goes totally over my head. What I want to do with every Matt Rule press conference henceforth, Josh, I would like to, or maybe we could just make a montage. This would be hard because he's talked a lot. But I just want to I just want to make a mental note or a physical note of all the times he says Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> Can we do that? It would be a lot. He yeah. mentioned it but, again. Yeah. yeah. It's it, this is his second year at Nebraska. He's start, he's talking about it again. Christian McCaffrey. Christian Christian McCaffrey did this. Now back when I was coaching Christian McCaffrey. It's uh it's it's the same thing as Mark Whipple and Ben Roethlisberger. You know, Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> ben Roethlisberger. It's awesome. I love it. Keep talking about Christian McCaffrey. It's kind of fun. All right. Uh from the text line here from Jason Siegel, mispronouncer. Uh <laughs> bunch of my friends were hating on the eclipse yesterday drove me crazy a little a literal chunk of rock floating around our chunk of rock passed in front of the star that powers our previously mentioned chunk of rock it's absolutely awesome thank you and a great take by jason siegel mispronouncer common ground <laughs> good Jake babe all right uh like i said we're off and running for today we'll talk to alan in a little while and we'll talk to jacob bigelow in the one o'clock hour elsewhere on the show we'll talk of course Get into the national championship game of last night and the ever polarizing Daniel Hurley. People have thoughts about him. What are we going to do with this guy? Oh, I, I have some thoughts about what to do with him. Um, the Big Ten still hasn't won a national championship since 2000. People forget. Uh, your guys' mutual hate, I guess, of one shining moment. It is Master Week, Masters Week. Uh, Caitlin Clark does numbers again. Uh, baseball season is very underway, but we're talking about anything but baseball. Sorry about your Spencer Strider, Josh. Well, he's getting evaluated. A second opinion. You know, those things always turn out really well. Worked out for Garrett Cole. Uh, John Calipari, an American success story, became really good friends with the guy from Tyson Chicken <laughs> and now is going to be the coach at Arkansas. What a story. Um, <laughs> uh, an interesting thing said by uh, Stanford's Cameron Brink regarding conference realignment. Uh, Josh added that one of the timeline. And we'll tell you why Nebraskans get over things really fast. Yes. Oh. All coming up on the show today. Uh, we will come back and fire it up with a little natty talk next on the Connor Hamper Show on 1620 The Zone. But as we move away from college hoops and into pro hoops in the NHL playoffs, baseball is also in full swing. FanDuel is your place to bet on everything under or in between us in the sun right now new customers get 150 dollars in bonus bets guaranteed 150 dollars win or lose once again 150 dollars win or lose bet on everything slap shots home runs slam dunks um all an app that's safe secure and easy to use so there's no reason not to go now fanduel.com slash happer and make your first bet an auto win like an auto ball or an auto strike in baseball an auto win on the FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. 21 and over, present in Iowa. First online real money wager. Only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is now with trouble. Bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. For the Jays, the Huskers, and even you Jayskers, we are 1620 The, the zone. zone. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. In the process, started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. The ugly truth is when you buy a timeshare, you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. I recently helped a couple that had their maintenance fees go from $800 to $3,200 a year. They also received a $4,000 assessment for a hurricane that was over 1,000 miles away. Sound crazy? The crazy thing is this never ends. Call my office now. 
If we take you as a client, I guarantee we'll cancel your time share or you'll pay nothing. Call for your free information kit. Call 800-462-3333. That's 800-462-3333. 800-462-3333. Don't miss this week's Zone Deal. This week's half-off deal is Cops. Receive two $25 gift vouchers for just $25. Cops makes delicious pizza, fresh salads, and tasty charred wings. For the basic menu, click copspizza.com. And for the extended menu, visit them at Shadow Lake Town Center, 180th and Center, and the newly reopened 72nd and Jones locations. Zone deals go fast. 9 a.m. Friday, 1620thezone.com. Omaha Kings FC, Omaha's professional major league indoor soccer team, welcomes the 2024 MLIS League Finals to Omaha's Baxter Arena. Join the Omaha Kings and MLIS this Friday, April 12th, with two back-to-back semifinal matches, but only one ticket needed for both games. The first match is scheduled for 5 p.m. Then there's the championship match on Sunday, April 14th at 2 o'clock. Tickets at Ticketmaster.com, the Baxter Arena box office, or by calling 402-554-MASS. Get your tickets now. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to Ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Hey baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Last night we learned that there is indeed no match for UConn. Um, But why? Why is there no match for UConn? Is it because they have far and away the best players in the country? In my opinion, no. Now, they do have many of the best players in the country. I do not want to short them on talent. Uh, But as we talked about a little bit leading into the Final Four, Josh, and then I think leading into probably the Sweet 16 a little bit as well, I think that team, and, and this sort of weaves into the Dan Hurley topic, that team has endeared themselves to a lot of people, including myself, because I have come to appreciate how hard they play. And that doesn't always get you there. But I think given their circumstances, and, and like I said, we, we, we basically went through this last week, but they won the national championship last year. They have some of the best players in the country. They, it's, it would be very easy for UConn to be front runners. They're not front runners. They're the exact opposite. And if you watch them, you don't get the sense that any possession means any more than the one before it or the one after it. They approach everything the same, and that's with 100% chip on your shoulder, bleep you intensity. And that's because of their psycho coach. Right? So if we don't want to, like, I don't know what the narrative on them is today. But if like if if you're talking about just oh they're just really talented and you couldn't do anything about it and obviously they they are but realize they are the way they are because of Dan Hurley. This is the best coaching job in America this year by far. By far. And I know like you'll, Did you hear about Hoiberg? 
you'll look at it with the uh, with the information that you have. You're like, well, in the national championship last year, they brought a whole bunch of guys back off that team. How is this the best? You know, how is this the best coaching job in America? Because of exactly that, they they steamrolled everybody on their way to winning a national championship. Um, and it, it's it's because they have a coach who's an insane person. And everything means everything all the time. Like this, everything is maximized. This is in your wildest dreams, a team that you would like that one of your teams that you root for could end up being. They are talented. They are dynamic. They could win basketball games in any way they choose to win basketball games. Right? Because, I mean, we talked about it. What, what's the best type of team to take down, down UConn? Doesn't exist. Right? They can win games in any way. But what's more endearing to me and what's more fun to watch is how much they care about everything. They are they they have the precise execution and they don't take plays off, right? It's they they like we look at programs a lot of times in college basketball. It's like, are you offense, defense? Are you a developmental program? Are you getting guys out of the transfer portal? Um, are you the type of offense that's that's free flowing, or do you run a lot of sets? You know, in, in all like they are all of it. They are all of it. This is like an all encompassing, gigantic monster of a basketball team. And so when you ask the question about like where do you put them in, in all time history, I, I I can't give you enough context to give you an answer on that, Josh, because I'm just not I'm not like as well versed just comparing team over team. But I tell you what, I have very very rarely enjoyed a national champion more than I did. And this is with all the, and then, you know, this is with like Creighton had beef with them this year. Right. And like Dan Hurley comes off maybe as, as unlikable. I want to talk about him in a second. Um, although I disagree with you, but it's, it's so enjoyable to watch because that's all I could ever want out of a sports fan of my team, of my team. If, if, if you're a Creighton fan, if you're a Nebraska fan, if you're a Royals fan, if you're a Chiefs fan, all you ask going into any given year is you take the roster and you say, what can we get out of this? What is the most that we could get out of this? That was it. Crushing every team by 20 en route to a national championship. It didn't have to be that way. Some teams who have won championships don't, don't approach it that way, and they don't have that chip on their shoulder, and they sleepwalk through games, and they're like, ah, well, this is what you don't get in the NBA. Right in the NBA, you're a fan of the team in the NBA, and you're like, yeah, okay, well, whatever, we'll just wait till the playoffs. Are they going to be the sixth seed? That's fine. They still have a chance to win a championship. Every single night, they gave you that, and um, I think that's what makes them so much fun, super endearing, and um, you know, kind of an, an all-time basketball team. Just a just a great watch last night. A great watch. Well, it. Purdue gave him a good half, and then uh, UConn came out of the locker room. Yeah. Kind of, kind of hit him with the avalanche. Well, it, and... it's funny because it wasn't like I kind of felt like going into half or, or I guess coming out of half when UConn you know, started to separate a little bit. They got him at arm's length. I kind of felt like, oh, they're going to take a big swing here, and then we'll see. But it was never really a big swing. It was right. just kind of body blows. Yep, They just crushed him with body blows all night long. Anytime, anytime there was a window of hope, a window of opportunity, UConn's like, no, thank you. And I, I, I found it like on one of the possessions, and I think that's what I when I ended up tweeting it out last night about this whole thing about UConn. You know, they get a couple stops in a row, they get a couple buckets, maybe a big dunk, and some teams with all the momentum on their side, they they they're like their coaches yelling at them, it's like this possession, this possession, get a stop, and they start they start slapping the floor and stuff like that. You get the sense that that possession means more than other possessions because of this kind of mythical momentum monster that I that I absolutely believe in. Um but when every possession's like that, how do you break them? You <laughs> it's really hard to break them. That's why they don't that's why they don't get emotional. They are like they combine the robotic surgical, you know, serial killer type of deal with the with the free flowing athletic talent, a couple personalities as well. I mean, it's it's um, it is a unicorn of a basketball team. It was a unicorn of a basketball team, and I mean, I, I'm 
super excited to see the encore and 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 what that group looks like because <laughs> that's a really hard coaching job what Dan Hurley just did and they they got everything they could out of it which is super impressive. And now he's going to go to Kentucky, right? No, no, I don't think. No, so. he's not going to go to Kentucky. Kentucky should call. Absolutely. He should not go. He he should not go to Kentucky. It's a perfect fit. It's a it's a it is. it's a perfect guy for that program and their fan base has been emboldened and um and he absolutely loves every second of it. So let's talk about Dan Hurley for a second. Um you guys heard, you know, the the spiel that I just gave there. He is like I'll give you this. He's a lunatic. He's an absolute nut job. But I think he, like, I enjoy not not so much like the antics, quote unquote, but his fire and his intensity absolutely and completely rubs off on his team, and that's why they don't take possessions off. And I think he does a lot of the things he does to push his players' buttons because he knows that they're he knows that they're, like he's setting an example for them. Basically, what I'm saying is a lot of what you see on the sidelines is a bit. Have you ever heard him talk? I mean, people around here probably have because we're well versed in the Creighton stuff and the Big East stuff. Sure. But like you watch him do a press conference. He's a very normal guy. <laughs> he's a, he did an interview that got tweeted out last night on the uh, on the Royals pregame show when they visited the Bronx last year in the summer. And he was throwing out the first pitch. And it turns out he's a big Royals fan. And. Like he, he, he honestly seems like a really good hang. It, it wouldn't seem that way if you're watching him coach. It would not. But I no. think he's uh, like, I think he knows exactly what he's doing, he, exactly what he's doing, and that he's trying to get his team to react in certain ways. Um, and I like, you could take it even a step further and say, like, this is a, this is an area of college basketball that the, the, the kind of mindset, the mentality stuff that, I think a lot of our best coaches right now have found edges in. We thought the edges were going to be in money and and they still are to a certain extent. Like there's edges everywhere, but a lot of people talk about college basketball in terms of, Hey, the edges are in money or shoe deals, or it used to be in shoe deals before NIL deals, NIL war chess facilities, um, you know, history, all of these things. But like what I enjoy most when, when I, when I find a team, that I enjoy it is because they have the killer instinct that is all started and emanates from the coach and has a great, great understanding of what his team is, what his team's, what his team's needs are, what his team's good at, what his team is bad at, where you can push, where you need to pull off a little bit. Like that's real coaching. And Dan Hurley has Dan Hurley did that this year. And so I guess say whatever you want about him on the surface. It looks like, it looks like he's just a nut job. Um, I could tell, I feel like that is all purposeful from him. Like he can control himself. He just chooses not to sometimes. And um, that that's what I saw last night. And when I watch him coach, which is quite frankly, often, because I think they're a great watch. I watch, I watch him beat down Stetson by 50 in the first round. I'm like, hell yeah, this is awesome. Why am I rooting for these guys? I don't like normally the the big favorite in our country is the team that's getting rooted against the entire time. It's like I they they have this heel to them, and like maybe they have a they have a little bit of that to them. But I just I I really find them more enjoyable, and um, you know maybe it's because of this association to to Creighton. But like you would think that I would dislike them for that reason because yeah. he's yelling at the fans and and all the stuff that he's doing and and saying stuff on the side like i really think he's control in in control of all that and is doing it all to kind of send a message to his team whatever that message needs to be on a daily basis which is i think it's really i think it's great and that's why i thought they were enjoyable this year also i love cam spencer oh my god i watch cam spencer i mean Cam Spencer played probably about as good of basketball as as a, a person like Cam Spencer could play for the first eight minutes last night. He was awesome. He was the difference in that game at the very beginning while Edie was just making everything he looked at. 
Um, you know, whether it's tough shot making, uh, playmaking, um, you know, grabbing a couple boards, you know, stealing a foul here and there. He was uh he was really, really good, as well as everybody else last night. We've had several people comment in. I'd like to you to address the allegations. Yeah, let me get to some um, comments here. Sure. Uh James on YouTube. Hurley spent more time on the court than his starters last night, not to mention stepping on the court to give his player a push during the action. Can't stand him. Okay, so I didn't think he was on the court that much. I mean, he was generally for the game. Obviously, there was the part where um, he kind of swung, he kind of flung his arms around, and um, was it Spencer or was it somebody else who was standing right in front? I think it was Spencer actually who had the ball, who was standing right in front of him, and um, he. He might have made contact with him, and Jeff Anderson, the official high knees man, high who, knees man yeah. who was standing right there, you know, immediately said, "Hey, you can't do that. Ball's going the other way." And this is by the time the game was kind of, you know, no longer in the balance. Right, it was toward the end, and then you know something happened on the other end, and we went to a media timeout afterwards, and you could see Hurley, um you know, mouthing to Spencer afterwards, like, did I touch, did I make contact with you? Like, did I touch you? And Spencer was just like, I don't know. And then they just moved on from it. Kind of like that was an accident. Yeah. I don't think he meet, meant to slap his player. Right. And then he went in for the push afterwards. Right. I saw your, I saw the look on your face, Josh, like he, the swing is what initially got called. And then they blew the whistle and then he went in for like the 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 kind of friendly, you know, brotherly push there at the end. I I didn't have a problem with any of that. I don't know. Maybe I'm blinded. Maybe I got my. Maybe I didn't put my eclipse goggles on in time yesterday. You got your Dan Hurley colored glasses. I love the guy. I love them. I I, lo- I love the guy. Obviously, you know, I just learned last night that he's a Royals fan too. That helps. <laughs> that helps a lot. But um. I certainly get it, but when you watch what that team did this year um, and the way that they went about their business, they they combine with they combine the immense talent with the workman bring my lunch pail like attitude, which is I don't get how that's not endearing. Well, how, how many countless example how many examples do we have of teams who never reach their potential? They're so good, but they never reach their potential. How many examples do we have of the opposite, where we have a bunch of teams who play way better than what they're supposed to be because they come to work every single day and they 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 go full bore on every possession? We have so many examples of both sides of this. Rarely, rarely have we seen a team combine both of the things and put them together and win a national championship the way that they did last night. Well, the, the blue collar mentality gets overshadowed by the, the coach. Going right. Crazy. People don't think about that when they look at that team. And I'm telling right. you, I can't see anything else. It's because, you know, ball. I Tristan Newton started, started East Carolina. Kim Spencer started at Rutgers. Like, it's not like we're dealing with the, the five, five stars of America here. <laughs> They're like, if you go roster to roster over national champions, they're far from the best. Far from the best. But the reason why they're so good, and I saw Evan Mayakawa, the uh, the uh, preeminent nerd of college basketball, today, he, he did his, like, player rankings uh, by his system, and they had all their starting lineup in the top 20. That's not because they're all top 20 talents. It's because they maximized every single thing, every single part of them. Every single like Tristan Newton wasn't looked at as an NBA player a couple of years ago. Stephon Castle is, you know, that guy's an NBA guy. Klingon is not a lottery pick, but he's a good player. Yeah, uh, and, and a, you know, a future NBA kind of th- NBA kind of guy. Um, <laughs> I saw people talking about Spencer in the NBA, and they were like, "Yeah, well, you know, you." I'm I'm trying to explain this. So we were talking about this a little bit uh, when I was on my trip over the weekend. I'm like, are you gonna draft Kim Spencer? Like he is uh he is undersized. He is, as Rick Patino would say, slow laterally. I think that's just, you know, probably a way to say he's a white guy. Um, <laughs> you know, he's slow laterally, but he but he, you know, but he makes plays. Um, like that's not an NBA draft guy. He just maximizes 
I think he's real. I, I don't want to shortchange him. Like he's a really talented and really good player. Um, but like I said, like they've been the number one team in the country for the majority of the year. They've been the best team in the country all year, coming off a national championship. And the first thing you think about them is, oh, well, they they're just talented and they're just better than everybody else. It's not because they're just talented. The, re- the thing that has put this team over the edge that many teams like it in the past have not done is that edge, is that chip on their shoulder. And um, that's what I want to, that's, that's what I'll remember that team from. Four. Great coach, just a little. Yeah, he's a nut. A little, little psychopath. He's, he's a total nut. Uh, James follows up. He says, I'm not saying he's a bad coach. He's just, he's great at what he does, but his antics irritate me. Uh, from the text line, the 402. A 402. Now we know why Connor loves Hurley. He's a Royals fan. There Did he go is. on and on about 2015? Um, no, he didn't actually. He told the story about how he really liked George Brett, and that's how he kind of got into it. Um, let's see. We got another tweet here that I wanted to get to as well. Mm, maybe it was somewhere else. Anyway, that's my stuff about Dan Hurley. I like him. I think he's good for basketball. And I think he's a great face for college basketball. And I hope that Gotti doesn't go to Kentucky. Um, we will talk about the Big Ten struggles. Ooh. Give Zach Eady his flowers, as he very well deserves. Um, as we go on throughout the show today, still plenty more college basketball. We might do that coming back. Uh, but your thoughts as well, coming up on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. Roofing, siding, and gutters. Make the right call with the Rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Sharp for Lindley Clothing. The kids are telling me, and even adults, my fit is rad. You know why my fit is rad? Is because I'm going to Lindley Clothing. I'm letting them outfit me, and I'm also taking advantage of the final week of the annual spring sale. Get 15% off all sportswear, tailored suits, sports coats, buy one, get one half off, and also new to the Lindley Clothing family. This is a game changer. Listen up. Well suited. You can see for yourself how easy to shop for you or someone in your life just in time for prom, graduations, any special event. If I need a suit, I go there. Don't rent a suit. Buy a suit from Lindley Clothing and Well Suited. What does Saul's loan on? Almost everything, like jewelry, gold chains, bracelets, earrings, wedding rings, and high-end watches, guns, electronics, $10 to $50,000, super fast and easy with no credit check. Saul's loans on almost everything. Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get... Paid to shoot fireworks. JM Displays wants you. Help shoot an Omaha Storm Chasers game, Memorial Park Display, or any of the major shows in Western Iowa and all of Nebraska. If you like to travel, JM covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. They offer free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part time job. Visit JMDisplays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. JM Fireworks. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Welcome to AutoZone. What are you working on today? I think my battery's dead. With free battery testing and charging, we can help you get back on the road. Get in the zone. Auto. So what if I need a new one? We have the right Duralast battery for you, only at AutoZone. Get in the zone. Auto. And what about my old battery? We can recycle it right here at America's number one battery destination. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Restrictions apply. Nominations for the Step Forward Awards are now open. These awards are the state's most prestigious awards for volunteerism, and we need your help to find outstanding volunteers from your region of the state. If you know a volunteer who deserves to be honored for their service, visit serve.nebraska.gov and click Nominate Now. Made possible by sponsors like Omaha Public Power District. Nominations must be submitted by June 1st. Paid for by Serve Nebraska, aired by the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. 
Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Let's get back to the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. All right, a couple minutes before we get to Alan Bell, the AB3. Recap a little bit of last night and uh, look ahead to the Masters this weekend. Here's a list, Josh, of coaches who have won back-to-back national championships since 1965. Okay, okay. A lot of people would have just said 1965, but I like the flourish you put on it. 1965. Good flourish. John Wooden, heard of him? Uh, yeah, I have. Mike Krzyzewski, who's this? I think you're hitting the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Krzyzewski. Okay, wherever that is. Krzyzewski. Billy Donovan. Oh, yeah. And Daniel Hurley. Hmm. That crazy, crazy man. Also, back to conference wars. This is the first time since UNLV in 1990 that the champion came from a conference with three or fewer tournament bids. Oh. It's the first time in almost, uh, what, 35 years? that the national champion came from a conference with three or fewer tournament bids. Um, Maybe the Big East was good. I don't know. I don't know how to find out. Ken Palm knows. What did Ken Palm say? Ken Palm had the best uh, predictions this season. Oh, really? Yeah. They did the grade on that? They did, and uh, Bart Torvik finished last. What? Oh, man. Uh, Ken Palm finished saying that the Big 12 was the best conference and the Big East was the second best conference, and that the Big 10 was the third best conference, and that the SEC was the fourth, and the ACC was the fifth, and the Pac-12 was the sixth best conference. Should I keep going? I feel like six is probably (laughs) good. Mountain West was next, by the way. They had a billion teams in the tournament. Uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. They didn't win a whole lot either. Um, here is a clip from last night. This brings together the only two things that we've talked about so far today, which is basketball and the eclipse. What do you think Charles Barkley's take on the eclipse was? Uh, Would you like pr- to make a prediction, Josh? Probably that he looked right at it. All right, let's see what he has to say. Uh, I thought it was, I, th- I thought it was, I thought it was maybe the Chuck Blimp that got in the way. Hey, I, I, well, y'all, some of them losers standing outside watching that today. They're not losers. Yes, they are. It, no, it doesn't it just, happen often. Hey, Josh. we've all seen darkness before. Stop it. No, not, not in the daylight. <laughs> just, come on, man. Come on, Chuck. I don't did. hate on the eclipse. Come on, Yo, stop listen, it. I saw a loser standing watching your blimp. <laughs> they were outside. Have you seen Chuck's blimp? <laughs> so you, so you're not a fan. You're not a fan. Uh, of well, I'm not gonna sit outside like an idiot and wait on the darkness. <laughs> Did you not wait on your blimp? Wait to, I could have waited. It's gonna be dark when we go outside. Can, can I ask you a second? Did you ask your family to wait on your blimp outside? I was trying to get my grandson to watch. See, there it is. So what are we talking about? Hey, the eclipse gonna happen again. I ain't gonna ever have another blip. <laughs> Boy, this was a That's very a good thing. This was a very worthwhile segment. Uh, let's go over to. Uh, there you go. The man's an American treasure. He really, really, truly is. I disagree with the take. Yes, but I can appreciate it because of the vehicle in which he delivered it to me, and which was, I go stand outside like an idiot. You're not going to agree watch, with everything watch, Chuck says. Watch him to get dark. For it to get dark, you're gonna see darkness when you get out of here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not the only thing, Chuck, but it is pretty funny. Also, they kept bothering about a blimp. What's the? So he had a blimp. He had a he had the blimp of his face. I guess. Did I miss this during the? Oh final yeah, blimp? he was on the Capital One blimp. <laughs> Perfect. Amazing. We love Charles Barkley. We really do. I'm I'm really glad that he. Uh, I'm really glad that he, you know, gets gets his platform. Now it's, I mean, it, it's almost full Chuck time. I'm sure he'll get his master's takes in this weekend. 
and then it'll be uh, playoff basketball time, and I'll have some things to say about some people. Uh, from the YouTube here, James. Hi, James. A Phoenix Sun would be anti-eclipse. Good one. Oh, yeah. Get out of my way, moon. James is bringing it today. He really is. He's, he's bringing the goods. Is that a burner for somebody else that hasn't been there? I don't remember James popping up that much. We welcome all new listeners to the show. Uh, Alan Bell will join us in a couple minutes. Uh, the Big Ten still hasn't won a national championship since 2000. I've seen people theorizing. This is in basketball, by the way. I've seen people theorizing just that on the general idea, and, you know, it's it's been a big sample size now, 25 years. Um, the idea behind this or one of the things that plays into this is the fact that the Big Ten has transitioned over that period of time and probably prior to that period of time from being a basketball conference, a basketball-centric conference, to a football-centric conference conference now what happens when you become a football centric conference does that mean you ought to, i mean you still have to hire coaches who care about basketball and you have unlimited resources because of being a football but i've always been interested in that idea that you know football schools are football schools and basketball schools are basketball schools and it and, and for the record it has been rare to have football schools win championships in basketball and have basketball schools obviously win championships in football. I can't put my finger on why. I don't disagree with the general notion here, Josh, but I think I need more I, like I need more information. Like what's what's inside of there? What goes into the idea of the Big 10 being a football conference? And has it potentially led to less success nationally in the basketball realm? SEC hasn't won one since 2012. Uh huh. So maybe there's something to that. Is there? I mean, the Big East has won several. Yes. Yeah, you can. That that's a basketball conference. That's literally a basketball conference. They don't even have football in that conference. With, with Villanova's championships and UConn's champ. Well, UConn's most recent two championships coming as a member of the Big East. Um, like. Is there something to the passion and the energy being dedicated from your fan base being poured into basketball rather than having it spread thinly to both basketball and football or in football conferences for the rec? I mean, having most of it diverted over, allocated over to football. Is there something in there? Like, I don't think fan bases energies win you national championships or make you more successful but man it does seem to mean a lot to the basketball conferences it does seem to mean a lot to the big east it does seem to mean a lot to the mountain west um it 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 does seem to mean a lot to the acc and you know there's give and take because obviously those those conferences are getting left behind in the college football universe which pretty much runs college athletics so like i said there's a give and take it's not a positive or a negative but um it is it is very interesting to 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 kind of watch it's the fan bases it's the programs i think in the in the big east you know we we have we're we're both in big east and big 10 country here in the big east you have I feel like more of a willingness team to team inside the conference to sort of come together and say all for one and one for all the, the, the rising tide raises all ships, you know, that type of thing. And everybody sort of get behind UConn um, that, that might, there might lie our fundamental disagreement on conference rooting, I think between uh, like Jack and John, right? Like Jack Mitchell and John Bishop. They're both going hard. Yeah. and. You know, for um, for the Big Ten, you just, I don't know, am I wrong here? Like, you just don't see that as much, rooting across conference, um, you know? We're, yeah, I think they're both crazy. You, you think they're both crazy? Yeah. Like, in their, own, in their own fun way? Yeah, I don't. Are you talking about Jack and John, or are you talking about conference? Jack root? and John, okay. sorry. Oh, yeah, yes, I, I, don't, I don't conference root. Yeah. Maybe it's because you're uh, you're more of a football guy. That's Maybe. that's the theory that I'm laying out there right now. 
if you are a, if you are a college football guy and your your allegiances lie in college football and your school is a member of a football conference it seems like anecdotally you are less willing to conference root if you are a basketball guy in a basketball conference your team is in a basketball conference and you say we are kind of the little guys here and uh, we know that we're going to get swallowed up by college football and that's where all the money goes and everything like that. We're just, a, you know, our what happens in our sport is sort of just a byproduct of what happens in the football world. Maybe you're more likely to say, we still care. I'm glad that you still care about this because I still care about this. Let's care about this together and let's conference root with each other. I saw like pretty much every Big East coach last night. It was like, nice job, Dan Hurley. They all had bad things to say about him during the season. They're like, I hate this guy. I think you might be onto something here. <laughs> so like, I think there's more probably wood to chop there um, as we kind of think about that idea going forward and, and, and what it is and what it means. But um, it sort of, it sort of hit me last night as I saw Nebraska fans, you know, obviously taking credit for the idea that Nebraska beat, Purdue by whatever it was, 16. And, um, and, you know, mentioning that over and over again. And then there was Creighton fans who were like, well, yeah, Creighton beat UConn by what was it, 16 or something like that. Um, last team to beat them. Last team, last team to beat them. They unleashed hell on the entire nation of college basketball. Uh, last 12 NCAA tournament games for UConn, all double digit wins. And I believe I saw this last night. All covers. Ooh. A betting wagon are the Yukon Hussets. <laughs> All right, back with AB next on the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley. I wanted Nebraska to settle in, make some shots early, and then get into a moderate pace yeah. because they're not built. Like, start with their Air Jordans and then then slip on the uh, Skechers or the Hocus. Nebraska got sped up at the beginning of that game, and they got into, hey, let's just trade threes. And they did it to themselves early, and it became durable. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley, weekdays 6 to 10 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. A beautiful spring day on the way. Tuesday, expect mostly sunny skies. Wind out of the west, just 5 to 15 miles per hour with highs in the upper 60s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV News Watch 7. It's spring. Now is the best time to shop at Lenaha for all things garden or landscape. Our garden center is filled with the largest selection of homegrown plants, flowers, trees, and more. The area's best mulch and soil available for delivery and pickup. Rooted in quality, unmatched value. Lenaha Nurseries, 192nd and Center. Hi, this is John Bishop. Since the day I got my driver's license, I've had a check next to the organ and tissue donor box. It's a selfless gift because healthy organ donors can save up to eight lives. And with tissue donation, dozens more can get the gift of sight and burn victims can get life-changing skin grafts. Anybody can register and there's no cost to you or your family. Check that organ donor box next time you renew your license or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ and tissue donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. When you keep a car for a long time, it becomes a classic. When you keep your air conditioner for a long time, it becomes, well... Let's just say it doesn't get better with age. Call Standard Heating and Air Conditioning and have your old air conditioner checked out. If it's needed, you can have a brand new carrier air conditioner installed in no time with fast and easy financing. When the other companies send salesmen, Standard sends qualified technicians. It's just part of the way we do the things we do. Carrier, turn to the experts. Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get... Aid to shoot fireworks. JM Displays wants you. Help shoot an Omaha Storm Chasers game, Memorial Park Display, or any of the major shows in Western Iowa and all of Nebraska. If you like to travel, JM covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. They offer free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part time job. Visit JMDisplays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. JM Fireworks. Need tires but can't get away? Or is your company fleet plagued by unscheduled downtime? Check out Jensen Mobile Express Services at JensenTireAndAuto.com. The easiest way to get new tires delivered and installed at your location. Jensen. 
Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Host is roasting every morning. Host is roasting every day. Since 1972, family-owned and locally roasted Host Coffee Service has been roasting the finest coffee for businesses and restaurants. If you're ready to change to a better coffee provider, it's time for Host Coffee. Omaha's best coffee since 1972. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Join me, Jimmy Allen, for the Creighton Athletics Hour. We'll be talking all things Blue Jays and interviewing your favorite coaches, so you don't want to miss it. It's the Creighton Athletics Hour, Thursdays, starting at 6 o'clock, only on 1620 The Zone, 1620thezone.com, and your 1620 The Zone mobile app. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. money, 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 money. Alan Bell, the AB3, on the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. We are joined on the 42 Degrees of Source hotline by our good friend Alan Bell, the AB3, hitting bets and cashing checks. Ooh, all right. <laughs> Why not? Alan, how are you? Hey, fantastic. You know what? I tell you what, my favorite part on Tuesday, number one, is talking with you. Number two is the rest of the day saying, money, money, money. money. <laughs> I know. It really is an I earworm. It. <laughs> it's the best. It, like, it's so good. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, how'd you like the national championship game last night? Yeah, you know, it was really cool that we got to watch a UConn practice, right? Like, it was awesome. <laughs> I mean, dude, like, you, I, UConn, like, they weren't even tested in the tournament. I've never seen that before, man. What do you think of um, – it's it's amazing, by the way. And and so my, yeah. my, my take that I've been sort of, like, spreading around is, like, I don't – I don't know that that's the most talented team that we've seen. There's been better starting fives to win national championships or hell that got eliminated in, you know, other rounds of the NCAA tournament. Um, but Dan Hurley just somehow gets them to play so hard all the time. And now he's very front facing and he, he, you know, people have problems with, with the way he's, you know, the way he acts during the games. Hey, look, there he is on the, on the McAfee show right there with his AirPods on the bus. Um, what do you, th- what do you think of Dan Hurley? Like what, in all the conversations surrounding him over the last 24 hours? Uh, dude, I like him. All right. So, you know, we were talking last week, right. About how, you know, this UConn team is like not hateable. You know what I mean? Like yes. usually the, like this style of team, like America would be against, but I think we all respect like coaching and this is kind of the old school way of like sports, like what we all kind of grew up with and, and grew up, you know, playing in and not to sound like, you know, old man shaking his fist at the cloud. Right. But it's cool. Like it, 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 it this feels like what sports kind of used to be. Right. Oh, it's and, a good, uh, yes. It's just awesome to see. I was laughing, like joking about the practice part. I was laughing when Hurley went on the court and like pushed his way, like it was a practice. Yeah. Like that's how much he was like, dude, no one has a chance against us. Like, yeah. I'm just running. Like, he, I'm setting up freshmen for next year. Like, he always says, uh, he always says the practices are harder than the games. And so that's, yeah. I, I love- I, I, you know what? I don't doubt it. Yeah, I, <laughs> Honestly, I don't either. Man, and, the, and the crazy thing, like you were just talking about, like how, um, how Hurley gets them to play so hard, which, which is correct. It, it's even more amazing that they get better as the game goes. Yeah. Like, 
we were all talking, you know, like, uh, okay, well, the second half, you know, historically it got better, and they did again. Like, this team is just, dude, they're just old school tough, man. That's what they are. I love it. And and I love. we were just talking about this kind of idea a little bit, too. Now, it would have been the case had Purdue won last night as well, but I love it when a basketball school wins a national champ wins a national championship in basketball. There's something yep. there's something like pure about it. I mean, you were just you were just talking about the way that sports like were I think there's something really pure about a basketball school winning the winning the national championship and you know the, it has that kind of small-ish kind of feeling to it even though it's a it's a national brand of a program. Um I like I I love that idea of how they of yeah. how they accomplish what they accomplished. Yeah, I agree, right? And, and you know, it, 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 it's cool to see, like, you know, um, like you said, like, schools that, that take it very seriously and always have, and they continue to do it, right? Like, not that we're UConn fans by any means, you know what I mean? But right. I agree with you on that. And, uh, you know, another thing, like, UConn's not the biggest school in the world either, and it's not in the greatest location. And what I mean by that is that, you know, uh, Nebraska, right heart in the middle of the country. You can access anywhere. You could get people in and out. But Connecticut is not the easiest to do, and the weather's not the best, right? And, you know, the fact that they just said, look, we're just going to own the Northeast, right, where there's a lot of good basketball players, um, and, and we're just going to do it. And they have, man. It, it's funny, like you said, like, where does this UConn team rank? Like, this isn't even the best UConn team that they've ever had. Like, oh. not even close. No. But they might, they might even be less talented they, than they were last year. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, you know, the other crazy thing is this, is that we could say the exact same thing about, like, South Carolina women, right? Like, yep. they, were, they were really good last year, and then they replaced all their starters that did the exact same thing then. Yeah, amazing to watch. Alan Bell of the uh, the AB three joining us. Okay, so I assume you got a lot of Masters talk on on deck this week. How have we? I mean, it's it's Tuesday, yeah. so we're going to start seeing like some some practice rounds and some part three shots coming up. Like, are we starting to feel it on the Masters yet? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely starting to feel it. Right. And, and today, you know, is going to kind of be the, the the real start of it. Now, here's the big question. Okay. Tonight is the Masters, you know, the champion's dinner. Yes. What Ugh. are you rolling with? Like, if you won last year, right, you're choosing the menu. You know what I mean? Like, and you don't have to break it down in full, but, like, are, you know, are you going, are you a steak and potatoes guy? Are you a seafood guy? Like, burgers? Like, how would you go about it? When you, when you asked the first time, the first thing that came to my, came to my head was seafood. We're going to have some sort of a – like a seafood base, like there's going to be a lobster on the table um, nice. or or something like that. Or like, I just love like a lobster roll or maybe what if you yeah. did lobster rolls for everybody and then had some, some sides to go with it. You don't have to do anything that crazy. Keep it simple. Yeah. That's a, see, and that's a good plan too, because you know, it is a buttoned up event, right? So, you know, you've got like, you know, the, it, they're, they're a little bit more than finger foods, you know what I mean? But yes. they're, they're easily, digestible it's clean but you still get lobster i think you're on to something there man but i'll tell I you what it. yeah I'm, i would i would really love to attend this year's dinner because i always love when i go to a place and i look at the menu and i have no understanding of anything that's on it have you seen the menu <laughs> that john rom has created for this year it's all spanish stuff and i can't read any of it so i love it all it automatically is. It, 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 you know, that you, first, you're exactly right. And number two, like any restaurant, whether it's, you know, super nice or just, you know, casual restaurant or even fast food, like around you, that's always the roll of the dice. Like, because you have the thing that you know is good and you get it almost every time. And you're like, well, that's, that's what I go to. Or do I roll the dice on something new? But if I don't like it, then it stinks because I know I could have had something I do. Like, yeah, I'm with, like, it's only the internal. Uh, struggle right there. We go. We go consistent. We're going to. Oh, I'm a huge roll of the dice guy. I I love I love to see nice. the stuff that I have no understanding of what it is. Like I did that. So yeah. I'm in. I was in Vegas over the weekend. Went to a restaurant. It was like a like a Japanese place, and they have a menu and everything. Stuff that looks good. Waiter comes up and he's like, "All right, you got six people here. Here's what I usually tell them. Like we, you know, I could just bring you a bunch of stuff that I think would be good for you. I'm like, you don't have to say anything else." 
Yes. Ooh, I, I don't even that, care what it is. That, Explain it to me as we go. That's great. That's the dream. Dude, that is the dream. And, okay, so I'm with you on that because now you get a little bit of everything and everyone does. And number two, if you ran that restaurant, that's a great way. Like, now you just got, like, you know, six meals, and then you're like, okay, because everyone's going to like it. There's no way you won't like that. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And then I, it's like you could you could parlay that into now we're probably going to get desserts here as well because they trust us. That's of true. What we're doing. That's a smart play. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We, so we did it, and then the table the table next to us did it, and then the table that filled in on the other side of us did it as well. And they, 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 they all seemed very happy with it. I was – That is – you know what that is? That is a Creighton baseball well-oiled machine right there. That <laughs> restaurant knows exactly what it's doing. Yep. Hey, got another uh, two out of three it's last weekend. I don't, are you still on the uh, on the Creighton train even as we head into uh, Big dude, East play? I, I was talking about it this morning on the show, dude. 24 and 5. Still, and look, not to throw, you know, throw the jinx or anything out there, but, I mean, a, a team that hasn't lost back-to-back games all year, right? And, look, it's going to happen. At some point, so it's not like you know we're talking about a no hitter here, but like I, the, the team just continues to go and, and they just continue to play good baseball. They're they're excellent. A uh, good time for a plug. Uh, Sixteen twenty the zone tonight. Creighton at Omaha at Tally there Anderson Field. Uh, okay. By the way, uh, we got sidetracked on food. Any actual picks for the Masters or thoughts on the on the field this weekend? Yeah. So I mean, you know, all, I think all the look is going to be on Rory, right? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know yet on any picks, right? Um, but I, I, all the, the mo- a lot of the money's going to come there. Like, what are you looking at? Like, you get down on like round one, round two, round three, round four type bets, or you just go uh, like outright future. Like, how do you go about it? Okay, that's a, yeah, that's a better way to approach it. Um, like, yeah. you don't have to straight up pick a winner. Uh, Scheffler is plus four fifty. Scotty Scheffler plus four fifty at the yeah. moment. But like, Scotty. I- there's so much. Here's the thing about betting golf, and especially with the Masters, the, like you could do guys to finish in the top ten, pick three or four of them. I know you always, you know, leave those examples out for football for us. Like, hey, I pick a few to go over, um, and then yep. go from there. And then they have specials. Like I'm looking at one right now. That's Scheffler and Rory both finish in the top ten. That's plus two hundred. Um, that'll get you ties as well. Like there's so many of those combos. Um, like. I, you don't have to straight up pick a winner and go all or nothing on that before the weekend starts. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like that style. Also like, you know, uh, each round, like matchups, <clears throat> those are, those are always fun. And then like, I mean, this is not an actual bet, but uh, of course it's raining again. Like there, there's going to be like that day mm. where, you know, it rains and then Sunday we have like 96 holes, you know, that'll be played. Like, I feel like it rains every year. It's massive. It's great. It, it, we've been on a little bit. Excuse me, a little bit of a run of that over the last yeah. uh, couple years here. Uh, baseball stuff. I mean, any trends that have developed over the first two weeks of the season? That you, I, I know you guys are in on baseball stuff, kind of just like on a on a daily basis. Yeah. But um, what do yeah. you what do you what have you hit? What have you liked that you've seen so far? Yeah, so I'll tell you this, man. Um, you know, we're seeing you know pretty high run production here, and you start to hear starting pitchers complain about, you know, we've already seen some injuries and some guys that are, you know, not going, you know, as far as they would in terms of innings. Keeping up on that, you're going to see run production uh, continue to rise um, because starting pitchers are so incredibly dominant uh, in the league baseball. Uh, and a lot of them are saying because of the pitch clock, right? Because now that they've been sped up, you know, they're having, you know, UCL type thing, whatever, right? So keep an eye on that, man. Run production has been really nice. And then Anytime you're playing in Colorado, it's just a launch pad, dude. <laughs> it's amazing. They they both have no pitchers that are halfway decent, and they play on the moon, basically. So, yeah, it's going to fly. <laughs> they do. There's no <laughs> gravity. And they also, like the Atlanta Braves, like their team total is usually set at like four and a half, sometimes five and a half every day. Like they hit that number even when they lose. You know what I mean? Like, it's just nuts, man. Like, this team just puts it run at an incredible rate. Marcelo Zuna for the Braves. You're looking for props? This dude's literally hitting a home run every day. It's just insane. Awesome. Uh, Alan Bell of the AB3 uh, joins us. AB, we appreciate it, man. As always, um, keep humming that song in your head and enjoy the rest of your day. (laughs) You too, brother. Appreciate you, man. Money, 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 money. Alan Bell.
Josh says, says, Josh says, I'm not betting Marcelo. Not Zuno. betting Marcelo. <laughs> Zuno. I will not profit off of Marcelo. Oh, Josh, Zuno. you're so morally responsible. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, you pick and choose. Yeah. Uh, on the baseball injuries, I'd like to talk about that. Okay. During the show today. Yes, I have please. takes. I have takes. I, I would love thoughts. your takes. I don't. I don't think it's the pitch clock. I, I don't think so either. Because they tested it for years in the minors before they activated it at the big league level. I, I think it's I think it's something bigger that's happened over a long period of time now. Um, and I think we're gonna have a really, really hard time slowing it down. I, I was reading Passon's story, and we'll we'll talk about it a little bit later in the show. Um, but you know, he kind of had a call to action at the end of it. It was like, hey, I don't really know what it is. It's it's a combination of all these things. But it, what's clear right now is baseball has to do something about this. W- what is it? You know, so I think it's going to be a really hard thing to do. Um, you know, because what you're asking, what you would be asking players to do is stop training the way that they train. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's not going to be easy at this moment, especially when you have so much success. Because when you, it, it works when they're healthy. It's just they're not healthy for years at a time with these exploded UCLs. Sorry, Spencer Strider. No, we don't know that yet. Getting a second opinion. Okay, sorry, Shane Bieber. There you go. His, guy, his definitely. That guy's screwed. Odd News is next on 1620 The Zone. Now live on Twitch, YouTube, and 1620thezone.com. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game because new customers, listen up. You're going to get 150. $50 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks whether you win or lose. You can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks. Whatever your preference, FanDuel has you taken care of on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So let me ask you this question. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash the zone and make your first bet an automatic win. It is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All you got to do is go to FanDuel.com slash The Zone. That's our promo code. That's the entry into FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. 21 over present Iowa. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non-variable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem call 1-800-BETS-OFF. When it comes to concrete repair, Everlevel has some serious game. Coach Greg McDermott here to coach you on why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. They've got the fundamentals to fix your cracked and uneven concrete, and their products will give you the best defense against future damage. It's a fraction of the price compared to replacement, and their solutions come with a long-term transferable warranty. Working with Everlevel is a slam dunk. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today for your free inspection. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. Email us on the Equitable Inbox with whatever is on your mind. The Zone Inbox is brought to you by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. You can hit me up, agree, disagree, tell me your thoughts on life at Hanley at 1620thezone.com. We want to hear from you on the Equitable Bank Zone Inbox. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Sharp for Lindley Clothing. The kids are telling me, and even adults, my fit is rad. You know why my fit is rad? is because I'm going to Lindley Clothing. I'm letting them outfit me, and I'm also taking advantage of the final week of the annual spring sale. Get 15% off all sportswear, tailored suits, sports coats, buy one, get one half off, and also new to the Lindley Clothing family. This is a game changer. Listen up, well-suited. You can see for yourself how easy it is to shop for you or someone in your life just in time for prom, graduations, any special event. If I need a suit, I go there. Don't rent a suit. Buy a suit from Lindley Clothing and Well Suited. More than 80,000 people in Douglas County experience food insecurity. So, local scouts are collecting food across the metro during this year's Scouting for Food Drive. In partnership with United Way of the Midlands and sponsors Warner Enterprises, Target, and Bakers, scouts will collect donations on Saturday, April 13th in local neighborhoods and also from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Target locations at 168th and Maple, 180th and Center, 120th and L, and 72nd and Dodge. For more information, visit M. MACBSA.org. We're going abroad for the first time in years. 
to Spain. But we don't speak Spanish. So we started using Babbel. And started learning Spanish fast. With Babbel, you can start having conversations in another language in just three weeks. Babbel's conversational method teaches you real-life words and phrases. And with Babbel's interactive bite-sized lessons, you'll remember what you learned. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿De dónde eres? ¿De dónde eres? When you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. In just three weeks, we're starting to have conversations in Spanish. Estoy muy emocionado para ir a España contigo. Aw, he just said, I'm very excited to go to Spain with you. Nos vamos a divertir mucho. And that means we're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> sí. Gracias, Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Celebrating 10 million subscriptions sold. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. Just go to Babbel.com and start learning a new language today. That's Babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. And now we've reached the point in the show where Josh Odson reads the peculiar, the bizarre, the comical, the odd news with odd son. Odd news, odd son. See what we did there? The odd news with odd son. Josh, I can tell you're interested in this. So just to expand a little bit more on my on my dining experience the other night. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't understand how you could go to a restaurant, a new restaurant, that you you know generally what it's about, but you don't know what you're going to get. How you could not go there and be like, hey, give me whatever you want to give me. I don't understand. Basically, what I'm saying is I don't understand picky people. So it sound it sounds like a huge gamble, right? It's but, really but it's, not. It's actually not because the chef is going to make whatever interests him or her. Yes. And, it, and you've it, already also you've already chosen the restaurant. Yeah. Like you did this to yourself. You lost the gamble before you even rolled the dice. If you pick the wrong place. Odds are they're going to make you something that is not readily available to everyone. It's just whatever sounds good to them in the moment. It's um, it, it, that is the way I want to meet to eat every meal. Please give me whatever you'd like Absolutely. to give me today. I'll eat it. There's a couple sushi places in town where we know if we sit at the oh, bar. Oh yes, we, you can just just yeah, fix me a plate. I yeah. don't care. What sounds good to you right now, chef, person who makes food, anytime. Even it even went to the beer because I thought about get uh, like I was going to get like a Sapporo, right? Sure. The Japanese beer or a Kirin. As you do. As you do. Because I'm at the Japanese restaurant. And the guy's like, no, no, no. He's Drake. Hand he's Drake meme. He goes, no, no, no. Here's the better one. Oh, this is the one where you can't get this everywhere like you can Sapporo or Kirin. Take this one. You can only get it in, I don't know, however many places. I'm like, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Guide me. You stop me from making a horrible mistake. Uh -huh. oh, I love it. Anyway, Josh, I've missed the odd news. What do we have? Well, we go to the. We love a good bit, right? And the oh, Mets. We love a good bit. The Mets broadcast had a. I don't know if it's a great bit. It is an interesting bit. Oh, the uh, the the Steve Gelbs uh, trying the food thing. Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. So I did too. Loved it. So there's this vending machine outside the ballpark. It's been there for years. Nobody's ever seen anyone get anything from it. It has things like chicken salad, burritos, cheeseburgers. Those three things in particular, though, is what Steve Gelbs decided to get out of it. Yes. And he decided, I'm going to try it. You know what? It'll be it'll be great content. And that's what we're looking for during a baseball game is great content mm -hmm. especially when the mets suck that as they do now granted they won yesterday but it's neither here nor there three more games the braves can get on them here um well the the money quote is he's trying it and he says i mean this harkens back to kramer eating that one wrinkled hot dog in the vintage movie theater yeah which is obviously a seinfeld reference a very funny show unlike uh, other producers belief it's a great two minutes of television, honestly. It's just man tries food from vending machine. And then, of course, the response at the end, I think he has a bite of the... Uh, which one does he have a bite of? The bur the burrito, maybe? He, he takes a rip out of the burrito, and he's like, you know what? <laughs> Hear me out, basically. 
And, uh, you know, the, the announcers in the booth are just sitting up there and they're laughing at him the whole time. It's a great couple minutes of television. That's how sideline reporting should work. Yes. They asked him, Hey, did you check the, uh, did you check the expiration date on those? And he goes, I did <laughs> April 13th. I cannot make out what year it says, <laughs> but I'm going to trust that it's still good. So this is, what I'm, that's what I'm gonna do for the college world series this year. I'm going to find the crappiest vending machine I could possibly find and then try them on air. Now it doesn't really work without the video component. We can vlog it. We can vlog it. Yes. Great idea. <laughs> All right. Um, the eclipse was yesterday. Have yes. you seen this? Have you heard about this? Yes. Um, large portion of the country was able to, uh, see the eclipse. Many people cried. Many people also Googled, why do my eyes hurt afterwards? Nice. Uh, you know, some people have notably looked at an eclipse without any uh aid to their eyes and it uh comes back to do do we know for sure that trump made it made it through that okay i don't okay i don't i hope he did for the record i just want to be crystal clear about that um search terms on google like eyes hurt my eyes hurt and why do my eyes hurt (laughs) saw a significant uptick around uh one o'clock yesterday afternoon here central time uh, in case you haven't been keeping up with the solar eclipse schedule, that's right about when it was going down. Uh, a little, little before that here, a little after that here locally, excuse me. Uh, other search highlights included, can I look at the sun, solar eclipse pain, and solar eclipse no glasses. Do you ever, um, on a normal day when there's not an eclipse, do you ever feel the need to look at the, look at the big dog? Nope. Look, look at the big guy? Nope. I don't either. Really just notice it if it's out or not. But it's the fact that you're told specifically not to on that day that is the draw to looking at the sun mm-hmm. that day, which makes it more horrifying in the situation that you explained or that uh, that Gary explained earlier with the kids at the schools. There's no way I could trust the kids at the schools. If you're telling them to not look at the sun, what's the first thing you do? You're a child. You look at the sun. You are probably I- going to look at the sun. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. There's like six kids who follow who follow directions in school. Nerds. They're all the nerds. Mm-hmm. The rest of everybody. Ah, look at the sun. No way I could trust that. Ah, uh, but it makes sense. You know, I did what I did yesterday was I was out in my backyard and um I just while keeping my head at a very even plane, I just took a picture of it with my phone. Oh, did you post a grainy photo on no. Instagram? No, I didn't post it anywhere. Oh, okay. I just took I just took a picture of it. Okay. I just wanted to see what it looked like. That was my way of looking at the sun. Just wanted to see. Saw a lot of people's grainy photos. Yeah. There's really no need for that. Right. Uh, we go to Florida for our final story. To Florida. Arguing that he was not subject to arrest. A Florida man told police that he was allowed to be drunk and disorderly. <laughs> And sit naked in a trash can on the public sidewalk. They told me I could be here. (laughs) St. Petersburg cops allege that Wiley James Weeks, 35 years young, was intoxicated, unsteady on his feet, and smelled of booze when they discovered him late Saturday evening on a downtown street. You think he got a COVID waiver? (laughs) I got my badge. Yeah, I got No, he got like his extra year of eligibility. And so, you know, he could do that. You do things like that. Weeks was extricated from the trash can, sans clothes, and arrested for disorderly intoxication and resisting an officer without violence. In addition to claiming that he could not be punished for uh, his Oscar the Grouch imitation, <clears throat> Weeks said he did not have to provide officers with his name or demographics. <laughs> he pled guilty and was fined $520. No. He uh, he had the waiver. Like I said. I can be here. It's okay. They said it's cool. Everyone told me that it was fine. I wonder who he got that authority from. I assume that w- that information was not divulged. Uh, it's certainly not in the article I read. That makes sense. Yeah. Josh, thanks. Thank you, Connor. That is the odd news. The noon hour is still to come. We're open for you guys. Want to hear from you? 402 951 1620 many things left to discuss including the exploding elbows 
uh, things coming out from uh, baseball, Nebraska ball getting, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, football, um, things coming out from football practice this morning, Nebraska ball getting another guy in their roster, and why Nebraskans recover from sports pain so fast. All to come in the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. But quick, a uh, quickly a reminder here for you to join the VIP club and sign up for 1620 The Email. You'll be the first to know about all the exciting things that are going on at 1620 The Zone whenever Nick's next vlog comes out. Uh, great segments on the radio, like especially good segments on the radio. Uh, contests coming up all straight to your inbox. So head to our website, 1620thezone.com, and get signed up for the VIP club, 1620 the email. We'll let that, uh, we'll open up that red, you know, the the thing on the red. Josh is looking at me like, what do you, you know, the red uh, barrier deal? You know, on the VIP red carpet, it's like the velvet. Oh, the, the red, velvet rope? The velvet rope. We'll open up the velvet rope and we'll let you in. Didn't need to explain that. 1620thezone.com. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. Are Nebraska craft beers and ciders important to you? Whether you just love Nebraska brewed beers and ciders or you're a full-fledged craft brewery, there are benefits to membership for anyone with the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild. Their sole mission is to foster and help grow the Nebraska-centric brewing community. Become a member today at Nebraska.beer and help advance the craft beer and cider industry in the state of Nebraska. Find out more about the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild at Nebraska.beer. 42 Degrees invites you to a tour of our botanical offerings during the limited time botanical sale. Get huge savings when you stock up on premium Kratom, CBD, Delta, all up to half off. And our premium cannabis is priced so low it's almost, well, illegal. Don't miss the botanical sale with savings of up to half off on the best that Mother Nature has to offer. 42 Degrees, your destination for top tier cannabis, second to none product selection, and exceptional service. 42 Degrees, by your mom's house. Is your concrete cracked or uneven? Hey everyone, Coach Greg McDermott here to explain why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. Many people think they need to replace broken concrete, but repairing it provides durable protection and comes at a fraction of the cost. Everlevel provides permanent repair solutions to fix your concrete and protect it against future damage. And it all comes with a long-term transferable warranty. They offer free inspections to walk you through the entire process. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today. Guys, let's have a conversation. Let's say you've been losing interest in your spouse. You got low libido. You can't focus on things. And you're wondering, what is going on? It may be low testosterone. Mentality is here for you. With their FDA-approved testosterone treatment, their board-certified physicians who work with most insurance companies, they can diagnose the symptoms of low testosterone and take care of it. Schedule an appointment today. Go to the website, lowtusa.com. Take back your life, men. Mentality. LowTUSA.com. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football. Football tailgate destination. News Talk 1290 Coil is your radio home for Omaha Storm Chasers baseball. Proud AAA affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. Tune in to hear every pitch, every hit, and every out as the Chasers play at Warner Park and across the International League in 2024. With the voice of the Omaha Storm Chasers, Nick Batters, on News Talk 1290 Coil. Tune in at 1290 Coil all season long for your Omaha Storm Chasers baseball as they take on the International League. It's Storm Chasers baseball on 1290 Coil. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. In the process, started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. The ugly truth is when you buy a timeshare, you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. I recently helped a couple that had their maintenance fees go from $800 to $3,200 a year. They also received a $4,000 assessment for a hurricane that was over 1,000 miles away. Sound crazy? The crazy thing is this never ends. 
call my office now. If we take you as a client, I guarantee we'll cancel your time share or you'll pay nothing. Call for your free information kit. Call 800-462-3333. That's 800-462-3333. 800-462-3333. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp's software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC. Terms and conditions apply. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. And now it's time, Josh, for the greatest challenge of my life. You peeling the curtain back for everybody here? Yep. Okay. 17 seconds ago, I was delivered a plate of delicious food from Meatball. It's a giant hunk of lasagna with a chicken parm sandwich, some waffle fries, and a couple slices of bread. It looks amazing. Josh has his as well. Josh, did you go with the sandwich? I, in- I went with the exact same order as you. Okay. Because we're boys. Once I found out that chicken parm was a sandwich, I was in. And um, the challenge is I have to just look at it and not eat it for as long as this segment may go. That's right. Which probably going to be a short one. It could be a short one. (laughs) It could be a short one. I guess I ultimately am the decision maker on how long the segment goes. But I got to tell you, this lasagna, this hunk of lasagna is doing some things to me. It's got so much more stuff in it than I thought it would. It looks like there's like spinach and. Yeah, different kinds of cheese. So this is going to be a big challenge for me. You guys know how I like to intake uh, food. I When I see it, I eat it. When I get fast food from the fast food window, it, I mean, 95% of the time does not make it back to my house or wherever I'm going. Thank you. Me as well. Because I just, I can't let it sit there. Yep. I don't like it to just sit there. Getting takeout is a, is a large chore for me. Going to the store to get a pizza or going to the, you know, the pizza place to get a pizza and bring it all the way back to my house. It's very hard for me. Um, I need that instant gratification and I don't want the, the food to get cold. I want it to be the best it could possibly be. And so right now I'll look at this and I'll look at it and I'll look at it and I'll look at it and I'll know because I'm talking so much. And then, you know, when I eat this in 10 or 15 minutes, it will be a lesser product. Unfortunately, I'm going to eat this fry right now. Do it. Let the people know that it's real. Look at the height on that lasagna on six on zone TV. Let the challenge begin. Oh, this is going to be a challenge. You got this. You got this. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're back. All right. Let's talk some uh, exploding elbows. All right. So we got a problem, Josh. You're damn right. We got a problem. Oh, Josh has now been personally affected by this tragedy. When it was just the Garrett Coles <laughs> of the world, I didn't care. Now it's Spencer Strider, his his dear son, Spencer Strider. My tiny baby boy. This my is, vegan baby boy. This is all within a 48-hour period. Yuri Perez, Shane Bieber, and Spencer Strider all have their elbows explode. Um, the ulnar collateral ligament is the ligament that um basically keeps your elbow attached to the rest of your arm mm. and so it wraps around it's a it's a it's basically a piece of rope that's inside of your elbow and um that thing bursts when there's too much pressure 
that's been put on an arm. There is, um, I've said this for a long time, throwing a baseball, this is well known, this is a scientific fact, throwing a baseball is not a good thing to do for that very ligament. Over time, it will hurt you. I believe you've called it an unnatural act it is before. An, it is an unnatural act. It is something that is not natural uh, for the human body to do. And the human body is not adjusted to this. It would take hundreds more years in order to do this. Um, maybe we eventually get there or something. Um, and now, as we've seen this now rash of pitching injuries, and it's not just you know three to 48-hour period. It is, I mean, probably about a dozen guys every year in Major League Baseball will have to get Tommy John surgery and reconstruct their elbow and, and um, you know, take a ligament from some other portion of their body and put it inside of the elbow to make their elbow stick together more is a very, very simple way of explaining that. Um, but we've seen it a lot now. And um, the Major League Baseball Players Union put out a statement over the weekend, this is the weird part for me. And they said the following. Despite unanimous player opposi opposition and significant concerns regarding health and safety, the commissioner's office reduced the length of the pitch clock last December, just one season removed from imposing the most significant rule change in decades. Which, to be fair to Tony Clark, who's the executive director of the Players Union, who you know issued that statement, they didn't need to speed up the clock. I don't think that's the reason why they're, they're people are getting injured the way they are, but they didn't need to speed. They they didn't need to cut down the clock from right. last year. Anyway, couldn't be. He said since then, our concerns about health impacts of reduced recovery time have only intensified. The league's unwillingness thus far to acknowledge or study the effects of these profound changes is an unprecedented threat to our game and its most valuable asset, the players. Um then the story explains how Bieber, Strider, Jonathan Loizaga, Yuri Perez, and Trevor Gott all have suffered elbow injuries in um, the time since really the season has started, which is, what, two weeks ago, basically at this point, um, which is kind of insane. It's it's a rash of them all at once. I, I think if you're doing like a sliding scale or some sort of a pie chart on what's what here and who's responsible for what and what's responsible for what, I don't like, I believe the pitching clock is probably responsible for some percentage of it, not to the level um, to where we you need, need to, to form move, a letter. We need to form a letter or we need to move it back up it, it, and that will somehow cause less pitching injuries. In my opinion, it is, well, <laughs> there's a big overarching thing and then there's a lot of small stuff that comes out of it. The big overarching thing is. I think this is not just a baseball thing. Um, this is maybe a societal thing or like a, a, a training thing. I think that we maybe as a society have gotten a little obsessed with the idea of maxing out. Uh, Josh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very natural thing to want to know, right? How much can my body sustain? What can I do? What is the fastest I can throw a baseball? What is the most weight I can lift? What is the fastest I can run? What is the uh, most force in which I could use to hit somebody with? Don't you want to know? Yeah, I do. It's yeah, a, it's a totally natural thing. Um, but what's not natural is the way that athletes are now trained to be able to achieve that higher number, higher number, higher number, and then want to achieve it more consistently. Like I said at the beginning, throwing a baseball is not a, is not a normal thing for your body to do. And now you're asking your body to do it at the maximum torque, at the maximum velocity for a short period of time or for a long period of time for many starting pitchers. There's a reason why starters get hurt more than relievers because they do it more. They throw 100 pitches a game or 80 pitches a game or 70 pitches a game in some cases or whatever it might be because they are telling their body, this is the way that I've trained myself to pitch. This is, a, this is the way in which I am the most effective. And honestly, I think a lot of players have admitted to themselves because 
they have realized that that's the way in which they are most effective. We talk about spin rate. We talk about, you know, horizontal and vertical, um, you know, exit angles and, uh, and all these things. Not exit angles for, for pitching, but you get the point. We have a lot of data behind this now. And a lot of people have seen this. Hey, man, this is, this is where I am the most effective. And it is repeatable, and you can do it. But what you don't realize is that over a long period of time, it is increasingly unnatural to do it. Um, we saw pitchers come out, um, you know, a couple years ago when they really cracked down on the sicky stuff. The balls were slick, and the pitchers felt like they had to use sticky stuff to get a grip. Well, the more you grip that baseball, the harder you grip that baseball. Josh, do a fist for me. Everybody in your cart, keep a hand on the wheel. Do a fist. What happens in your elbow? It yep. tightens up. Yep. And so everything, everything just feels more torque and more pressure. And then you're doing it 90 times over. And here's the injuries. And here they come. And so the question is now, what do we do about it? And I don't think it's an impossible thing to I don't think it's an impossible thing to reverse the trend here, but in a lot of cases I feel like we're talking about global warming, right? Like we have done Careful some counter. we have done some irreversible damage maybe. Maybe we've done some irreversible damage. Um and uh like reversing the trend, reversing the track or trying to do as much as you can right now will probably only do so much because guys have been trained to do this way. It, it, like I said, the problem with the training, the problem with it all is that it works. It works. It's good. It gets good results. But pitchers now just miss gaps and gaps and gaps in their career. And the science is so good and this, and, and the technology is so good and the, and the surgeons are so good that they can take these guys up and their they their back and their elbows are good, if not better, in a year when they return from the surgery. Tommy John isn't a death sentence. It anymore. is absolutely not. In fact, in a lot of cases, it's the opposite. Spencer Strider's about to have his second. Right. It, it we've seen many pitchers have two and three. Yep. And and I don't know if there's been a fourth or you know, by that time you just run out of time, I think. But basically, you know how these pitchers have now approached it because of the advances in technology and the advances in training is that they're willing to bet with the idea that their, their elbow is indeed a ticking time bomb. And they're trying to do everything they possibly can before it goes boom, before the boom, as Mike Ehrman Trout would say, <laughs> trying to not going to be around for the boom. These guys are going to be around for the boom. They're they're they are absolutely telling you, fine. It explodes, it explodes, but I'm gonna be the best pitcher I possibly can during the time in which my elbow exists. And then I'll get it fixed, and then I'll come back and I'll do it again. According That's to That's a hard thing to reverse, Josh. It definitely. It's a hard thing. According to Wikipedia, so grain of salt. Johnny Venters is the only player to undergo the surgery more than two times. I remember Johnny Venters. Yeah. I remember Johnny Venters. I don't know, man. I don't know what there is to do about this. I, I, I really, I really, I, I think it's going to be very, very hard. And um, stop hurling it all the damn time. Yeah, I mean you can't. Because now what happens is, like, when the pitchers are there, they get results out of it, and so they're expected yeah. to be that all the time. Yeah. And the guys who aren't that all the time don't play they don't make it <laughs> because in order to get to the level where you are pitching in the major leagues or you're drafted or you're getting a contract you're all these boxes have to be checked and you know what the boxes are for pitchers spin rate drop you know vertical induce whatever they call whatever the numbers on the rap soto uh track band deal are like those are the numbers that have to check out for high school pitchers What's your spin rate, right? And so what they're doing, what pitchers are doing, is trying to maximize that, the spin rate. There were people. And it works. 
and you get outs because of it. There were people during Spencer Strider's last outing when was they were tweeting out his velo's down five miles per hour. It his UCL's busted. Yeah, and he's out there playing. Yeah, like, well, you don't know until you know. Yeah, but you have a feeling when it's about to happen. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a pretty common thing in every guy that is about to have a exploding elbow. Yep. Oh, this is weird. Their velo's down. Ooh, let's put them on the IL for a little bit and uh, see if we can sort out the tendonitis because it feels it just feels sore at first. That's when you know the ticking time bomb is getting close to go, going <laughs> off. So what do you do? Where do you go? I don't know. Uh, here's here's Patson's last couple paragraphs here in the story that he wrote yesterday, which is very good. Hi, Jeff. On ESPN. Uh, maybe it's the clock. Maybe it's pitch design. Maybe it's velocity. Maybe it's all the above. Regardless of what it is, one truth the baseball universe knows is that the greatest predictor of a future arm injury is a past arm injury. In other words, the litany of pitchers who are now hurt, uh, who are hurt now, are at a far greater risk of getting hurt again. When a sport has evolved to the point where half of its participants are encouraged to compete in a way deeply detrimental to their own short-term, in many cases, long-term health, there is no room for politicking, bickering, or blaming. With a sound process and commitment to, from both sides of it, all the important questions would be asked and hopefully answered. This is about the people, and it's about the game, and it's about an awful place where the two are intersecting. If anything in baseball deserves max effort, this is it. That's the other thing. People are going to have to agree on things. Uh oh. <laughs> remember when baseball had that uh, labor uh, dispute not too long ago? Yeah, I remember when Manfred went golfing. Yeah, that didn't go very well. Anyway, it's a bit of a crossroads right now. And I'm sorry that Spencer Strider has to now be the poster boy for it, Josh. Well, I mean, second opinion. That's what the second opinion <laughs> says. Could, yeah. Could be good news. Yeah. Keep, your, keep your hopes up. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, Theo writes in, did Happer hurt his elbow pitching? Vaguely recall something like that. Uh, no, I didn't hurt my elbow. I messed up my shoulder, but I wasn't a max effort guy. I was a, I was a max effort. Didn't, wouldn't have got me anywhere. Max effort would have got me to about 88 and that doesn't really play anywhere. And so I was like a 90% effort guy and relying on a little bit of late break, you know, pitching a little bit right? more of a, like a, like a Greg Maddox but style. If, if I, yes, but if I pitch, like you have to understand once again that this is the plight. If I pitched in high school right now and was trying to make it to college, I don't think anybody would think anything of me just because I got guys out. Because it's not about getting guys. Hopefully, hopefully it is, right? But in a lot of cases, it's not about getting guys out. It's about the process in which, which isn't a bad thought idea, right? It's not a bad thought process. Like, what's your spin rate? What's going to lead? What's projectable? What gets you to getting guys out? Like I said, I, I talk about it this way in football too. Like I like the guys who, who play football. Like Isaac Gifford's getting a lot of love today. I always go back to him as my my bright shining example. I watched him play for three years at Lincoln Southeast, and nobody talked about him, and nobody thought about him at all. I'm like, this is the best player on the field every game. He makes every tackle. He knows where the ball is, and he knows where to go. That's what I like. I like results. And so when I was a pitcher, I pitched and I got guys out and I didn't throw very hard, you know, and that's because of physical limitations too. Like I'm a short fat guy and I, you know, was at the time as well. So, you know, it's, um, I, maybe, maybe that's the start of this, a return to let's just play ball, you know, that kind of thing, but easier said than done. I want to get to a couple of tweets on the other side. Um, from a good friend of mine who's, who's pitched and is in physical therapy as well. Uh, we'll get to that and uh, your thoughts next on 1620 The Zone. Previously on The Crossover. I have mostly sports things that I want nothing to do with muted. Okay. Major League Baseball, muted. <laughs> Baseball, <laughs> muted. Oh, don't you love the Mets? Uh, I did. Yeah. Mahomes, Chiefs, Harbaugh, Wolverines, Michigan, FIFA World Cup, Goal? Qatar, Goal. World Cup. VAR, USMTNC, World suck. Cup, Wordle. I got lots on him. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley, the Connor Happer Show on Sportsman Like Conduct, 6A to 6P, 1620, The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620, The Zone. 
A beautiful spring day on the way. Tuesday, expect mostly sunny skies. Wind out of the west, just 5 to 15 miles per hour with highs in the upper 60s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV Newswatch 7. The Connor Happer Show returns in minutes on 1620 The Zone. Get your family ready for warm weather driving and save with Money Saver April Tire Deals at Jensen Tire and Auto. With 21 convenient locations throughout Omaha and in Lincoln, Fremont, and Council Bluffs, drive in today and save up to $200 when you buy a new set of four Goodyear tires with the Jensen Driveout Package using your Goodyear credit card. Save up to $100 on new Cooper tires and up to $70 on a new set of General tires. Click on JensenTireAndAuto.com for complete details on all of Jensen's fantastic April tire deals. With 21 stores to serve you, your next new set of tires are close by. And so are the savings, including Jensen instant rebates on new sets of four select Continental, General, Maxxis, and Kelly tires. Check out all of Jensen's Money Saver April tire deals at JensenTireAndAuto.com and to request an appointment today. Jensen Tire and Auto, locally owned and family owned since 1973. Limited time offer, see store for details. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. My taco pie is really something special, and it can't be imitated. It starts with my zesty taco sauce, seasoned beef, onions, lettuce, tomatoes, mounds of cheddar, and mozzarella cheese. This pie is the real deal. For a limited time, build your own feast with a specialty pizza, like my taco pie, a one-topping pizza, and cinnamon monkey bread. Do yourself a favor and order. Today, Godfather's Pizza. Do it. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees, the source, by your mom's house. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, we take banking personally, member FDIC. Start your engines. Joe's Indoor Karting in Council Bluffs is off the charts crazy. Joe's Karting is fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping, wheel-to-wheel racing action at over 40 miles per hour. The only speed restriction on these carts is how good you are. Joe's Karting is located just a couple of blocks north of Bass Pro Shop and directly east of AMC Theater in Council Bluffs, Iowa. Go watch a movie. Come race at Joe's. Planning a bachelor party, graduation party, or just a night out with friends. Go to Joe's. Remember, Joe's Karting is your place to race. Hey, quick sidebar before I get to something here that Josh was reminding me of. Because well, Josh is uh, he's having a hard time right now. He's grinding through some things. But we appreciate him because he's a gamer. And he always shows up on game day. I love the game. Um, but uh, if it's April in, in Nebraska and you're mildly sick, could be anything, you just say it's allergies. That's right. You just get to blame everything on allergies. That's right. It's amazing. That's what I say every year. People try to convince me that I'm sick, and I'll say, no, it's allergies. It's awesome. I'm in, never because I'm never sick in April. In this but day, I'm always sick in April. In this day and age, people are like, oh, you know, maybe you go to the maybe go to the doctor, maybe you get that checked out. No, absolutely not. It's just allergies. <laughs> it's just allergies. Uh, okay, good tweet here. 
uh, from from my friend John Ringblum, who um, pitched in college, very good, and um, he is a, a Tommy John, you know, in the Exploding Elbows Club himself, and now is in physical therapy. He says the following: uh, As someone who's undergone Tommy John surgery myself, and as a person who works in physical therapy, okay, I just explain that, and done research on this, and been in the operating room to watch it to watch it be done. There is plenty of research on how to fix it, but it takes too long to build up where the recovery from Tommy John is faster and easier to just begin the training to build. There are seven to eight muscles, ligaments, tend tendons push to max strength each pitch. It's hard to prevent injuries at that point. I had Tommy John and then a rotator cuff repair four years later, went through all the rehab and training, and it still happened. You never take it completely out of the game. Unfortunately, the body just isn't designed to work that way. Even even for uh, even for not max effort pitchers, you know. So like, there's some of this that you have to live with. Um, but and to that it, goes to your theory that it's an unnatural thing to do. It is an unnatural thing to do. There's there's no doubt about it. And so um, I don't like I don't think this is an overreaction, you know, to to what's going on although it does it does um you know slide into hey here's a nice little rap sheet for baseball right now uh saw i heard wayne rondazzo lay out this really funny case for basically what's going on in baseball right now um including but not limited to these points the best player is tied up in a gambling adjacent scandal um the jerseys are garbage and everyone hates them, both designs and the material. Uh, the umpires have been absolutely horrendous. Um, there will be a franchise that's that'll be playing at a minor league stadium next year. And its owners don't care at all. Um, and of course, now that now we have pitchers' elbows exploding at a ridiculous rate at the moment. Quite the uh, quite the fun time for our sport. Hey, but the Astros threw a no hitter the other day. They did, and then that game, that same guy came back and threw like five more innings yeah. of yeah. no hit ball. That was awesome. Good for that guy. It's like the longest shutout streak to start a season, uh, longest no hit streak to start a season since like the eighteen hundreds. I was, I was going to say, I'm surprised <laughs> ever was not used in that specific case. It's very rare you get ever with baseball. But I figured that would probably be one of them. It's a it's a lot of no hit innings. Anyway, so just to just to kind of clean that up, like you know, there's research, there is there's science, but what do you do? I don't know. It's going to take a lot, and you could never fully take it out to the to the final point. Today. Right. Uh, back to the national championship game from the women's side. Got ratings on that yesterday. Were they good? I wonder. You tell me if this is good or not. So, e or ABC ESPN says they had 18.7 million people on average watching the uh, Caitlin Clark versus South Carolina game. The Iowa, I guess, versus South Carolina game. It peaked at 24 million. It ended up being the most watched college basketball game, period, since 2019. That's a long time. That would be since the uh, the national championship game of Texas Tech and Virginia, I believe. Really? Yes. Yes. Were we all magically drawn to our television? Well, there's there's pre COVID, there's post COVID. Okay. And that was a good game too. Had a you know crazy last second shot. Um, and just to go ahead and get in front of this, that will be more viewers than watched last night's game. When the ratings come out for the national championship game last night on the men's side, it will be less than the national championship that was watched on Sunday afternoon. And what does that mean, Connor? What does it mean? Oh, that's the question. There's a lot of people who have a lot of thoughts about what that means, Josh. <laughs> what do you think it means? What do I think it means? Yeah, what do you think it means? I think it means Caitlin Clark is a unicorn. Bingo. I think that is exactly what it means. That's not disrespect to the women's game. Nope. That just, and I don't even know what it is about her. Okay, great that, question. Let's let's dive in right there. That's a great that that's a nice little seven foot pool that we could dive into. 
I mean, it's what about Caitlin yeah. Clark is so interesting. And I do not say this in a combative way because I am interested. I am too. I, I am interested. I am genuinely wondering what is it about Caitlin Clark that has attracted so many people to watch her game in game out. Now her college career is over. Um, is it, I mean, let's just lay out a variety of different possibilities here. The idea that she is basically by herself on the team and you'd like to see her. Is it the same reason why people watch Purdue and Zach Eady? They're like, sure. Um, is it, uh, the, is it, she's, I mean, she hasn't been polarizing in anything she said. I don't think. Other people think she's polarizing. Other people want to go out and say that she hasn't broke record, that she clearly has. You know? Yeah, what's up with that? Other people want to say that she's been in college for five years. She's only been in college for four. Like, I don't get what the... I don't get what the general public... Um, and, and I shouldn't say that the general public doesn't like her because I think she's she's looked at favorably by by Americans in general. But you have so many out there who have used her as an opportunity to, um, you know, to say that this is what's bad. Like, I don't know. She takes too many shots. I don't know what it is, but she, complains she has to the been ref too much. a lightning rod for criticism, yeah. a lightning rod for criticism. And it comes personal. Like she does complain too much to the refs. Definitely. So does everyone. every superstar <laughs> basketball player. Every, everyone. Right. Like, so what is it about her? What is it about her? Because, and I don't even know if I should say this, but we've, we're here. It's not like she's Livy Dunn where we're all. Sure. I got you. Uniquely fascinated by literally anything she's doing. Yeah. No, there we've seen, we've seen women's college basketball players rise to a level of fame for that reason. Uh huh. It ain't that with her. No. So like, um, it's, it's really, now we get this from Aaron and Aaron, you're not wrong. Hi, Aaron. Aaron says he tweets at Connor Happer on the J tech instructions on Twitter feed. The time of the game had to have mattered with the ratings. No doubt about it. If you want to just talk about the 18 million that watched on Sunday, like I knew it was going to be higher rated than the men's game specifically for that reason. Like that's why that's, that, that's at least part of the reason why it is on Network television, we are still living in a society where people have television and they like the the television that's on the TV. You know, not everybody's a cord cutter yet. So when you're on network television, you're more people are going to watch you or have the opportunity to watch you. You're going to get better ratings. Absolutely, that counts. Um, Sunday in the afternoon instead of Monday night at like you know four o'clock in the morning, or whatever uh, the men's play the national championship game last night. Yes, that matters. But like. To take it a step further, to go beyond that, I'm genuinely asking the question, what is it? What is it with her that has made her such a lightning rod? Not just for ratings, but for all this criticism and, um, you know, like she, she is. How many times in our lives, Josh, have we seen the best player of all time in a sport come through? Ooh. Have have we seen the we, we have now seen the best women's college about basketball player of all time. Right. We have now seen her in our lives and in our in, in the take world that we live in. Have we seen the best men's college basketball player of all time in our lifetime? Gosh, I don't even know who that would be. I don't know. I don't know Just who on would a base be either. level. I mean, we've seen Jordan, we've seen Gretzky. We've seen Jordan and LeBron. Yep. Those are comps in the NBA. Have we seen the best baseball player of all time in our lifetime? Are we watching him right now? Is he kind of a lightning rod for criticism? Um, you know, he's definitely going through some stuff right now. I don't think he's the greatest of all time, at least not yet. Um, so that, like, I'm just throwing that out as a theory. Maybe that's just simply the reason why, because she's the best and she has to take all the arrows that are slung at her in that direction. Uh, Jack John writes in, on the J Tech Instructions on Twitter feed, ask Caitlin Clark's dad what's annoying about Caitlin Clark. He's always 
in the crowd telling her to shut up. <laughs> That's a classic dad move. That's a classic dad move. He's like, hey, quit complaining and go put like that's basically the equivalent of like the dad in the crowd at a high school baseball game saying, hey, put your hat on straight. You look like an idiot. Why are you wearing those sunglasses when it's nighttime? Why you got all those chains on? Classic dad take. Yeah. Classic dad take. All right. We got you talk about Caitlin Clark. People want to talk about her. It starts happening for you, I guess. Okay, so who's first here, Josh? Uh, Rick. Let's go to Rick from the 42 Degrees of Source hotline. Hi, Rick. Uh, you can call me Sunny, means it's sunny out. Hey, uh, thanks for taking the call. She provides drama, she's entertaining, and she produces. And furthermore, if anybody watches Chicago PD, there's a female police officer on there. She kind of resembles her. So, uh, you know. She came along at the right time, and she gets the job done. You know, she got number two for the national championship. But she's uh, she's in the right place at the right time. You know, it's that simple. Okay, okay. Uh, Thanks for taking the call. Appreciate it. Thanks, Rick, aka Sunny. Appreciate it. Now, I don't think because she looks like a lady from a TV show that is the reason for her popularity. But I think the rest of the stuff stands. I am going to put that on the poll, though. Is Caitlin <laughs> no, Oh, people... we're gonna get some votes on this. Is Caitlin Clark only famous because she looks like the lady from Chicago PD? Was that what he said? Was that what Rick said? Chicago PD? Yeah. <laughs> that could go bad for us, Josh. <laughs> we'll invite them back to listen to this segment. Another phone call. Here we got uh Donnie on the 42 degrees source hotline. Hey Donnie. Hey, it's, uh, it's Donnie. Hey, hey, you call me, uh, hey, just Don- call me Donnie. Hey, Donnie. I don't need a stupid nickname. <laughs> um, and, and she doesn't look anything like Ice-T. Um, <laughs> I, I oh, that's the wrong cop show. Yeah, gotcha. Sorry. Wrong cop show. So um, I'm going to, sorry, I'm pulling hose. Um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to address the elephant in the room because I'm in a small town, small community. This goes back to... The, uh, the issue that she had with the LA, the, the you can't see me and all that garbage. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin Clark relates to a certain sect of people in this community and in this country, uh, all white people. Mm. And it's finally nice to see a good white girl. I actually heard that come out of a guy's mouth. Interesting. She's a good white girl in college basketball these days. Mm. It's, it, to me, it seems like she's super popular. And, uh, and like you said, the, the ratings are there because you know, old people don't have cable. So they, you know, they watch what it, whatever's on the TV uh, that, that they can get on the, that they can get on the networks. And I just think that this is a perfect storm. She's an, she's an amazing player. She doesn't seem to have much of a, much of a personality that I've seen, but to me, it just hearing what I'm hearing personally, it just comes down to uh the the oh they were wrong in her and I can't believe that girl from LSU did that to her and disrespected her like that and so they all jumped on this bandwagon to protect the the poor innocent white girl in basketball and I I just I see that and and I just wanted to wanted to address that thanks guys interesting thanks Donnie because like obviously there's a lot of people who like her I don't know if that's the reason why but I, I think what I was getting at is that there's a lot of people who dislike her <laughs> like she's polarized sure. she's really polarizing so. Like, I don't think she's been really protected all that much by, by society. Um, but I understand the sentiment. Like I, 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 I not denying that that could, that could definitely be a thing in society. That's for sure. I got a text here that says, um, you know, it's because it's similar to Steph Curry in that she's normal looking. She's not a gigantic person or athletic freak. And she just, does extraordinary things on the basketball court. And it makes people think, hmm, could I do that? <laughs> could, could I? Now, the, answer is, this ability the answer is God, no. I mean, you can, as we all figured out with Steph Curry, like that, there's only one. There's only one guy. Um, it's, 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 it's a more desirable skill than, uh, than being seven foot four because you can just, you can be that all the time and you can run around and stuff like that, but not everybody has it right. You can't just, be, you can't just be Caitlin Clark. Or you can't just be Steph Curry because they look like you. 
they're they're good. But I like to think I can. Yeah, but you, maybe I guess I guess that's the um that's the case. Um, text from the four hundred two, Jason and Pender. I four hundred two. Uh, her overall game is an attraction. She plays a style of basketball that's exciting to kids and teenagers. I also firmly believe that her availability to fans has been well marketed. No doubt. Okay. Every time you see anything about Caitlin Clark, it's like look at what she does. She signs autographs for thirty minutes after the games. She does. She's a genuinely like good person. Like I, th- that's <laughs> maybe it's just because it's so different. Like we're used to our stars being not that way, you know, not, right. not as, uh, I don't know that she's like humble, but like not taking the time and, 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 you know, living a certain type of way and, and all that stuff. Like she's in college. She's a college women's basketball player. And she is rich, but you wouldn't know it. Like you, you wouldn't know it by by watching her walk into the arena. She's wearing sweatpants like everybody else. Um, maybe that's why you like her. Maybe that's why why you dislike her. But there's no doubt about it. She is polarizing, and she has. Uh, there, there's no doubt she's she changed the game. Now, what does it mean going forward for women's basketball? Obviously, you got to capitalize off of it from a ratings perspective. Is the national championship game going to be watched by 19 million people next year? No, I can pretty much guarantee you that it's not. That's okay. Um, the sport's in a different place now than it was four years ago. That's that's a good thing um, for that sport. Okay. Um, yeah, let's do a quick call here. Uh, here we go. Scott on the 42 Degrees of Source Hotline. Hey, Scott, what's up? Hey, thanks for taking my call. Mm-hmm. Um, just commenting on Caitlin Clark. Uh, she's very polarizing. While uh, she plays a style of basketball that is, um, she sees the floor like very few do, and she makes some amazing passes. Um, she's also polarizing because not every shot that she takes is a, is a foul. And uh, I'm sure it drives high school coaches and college coaches that tune in to watch her absolutely bonkers to watch her take some of the most ill advised three-point shots from 35 feet that you've ever seen Mm -hmm. so early in the shot clock, yet she does so many things that many can't, and so you got both sides of it, and she's a lot of fun to watch, but super glad Iowa didn't win. Interesting. Scott, thanks for the the call. Okay, he kind of got me thinking about something. Is she she polarizing because of her imperfection, right? Like, she does not she does not take the best shots Mm -hmm. at all times. In Mm -hmm. fact, she Many times takes a really bad shot. True. But you still have that hope that it might go in from time to time. And there's still the feeling of inevitability at the end of the day where she's like, oh, well, you know, if that's not working for her, she'll get something else going. You know? I said yesterday she's kind of got that uh, that Steph Curry thing where a bunch of youth coaches were always like, oh, gosh. All these <laughs> Here 10, we go. All these 10, 12-year-olds think they're Steph Curry and they're jacking it from the logo. Yeah. Like, that's... Careful. I realized it way after the fact. <laughs> Quick time out. A uh, couple more reactions on the other side. We still got to get to the big low. That'll be coming up uh, right after the top of the one o'clock hour. More to come in the Connor Happer Show on 1620. Omaha's most listened to all sports radio station. Again and again and again. 1620. The Zone. Standard heating and air conditioning is and has always been locally owned and operated. Now, With 160 employee owners, chances are one of us lives in your neighborhood. We take pride in taking care of you, our customers, and keeping you comfortable all year round. And as always, our technicians don't have sales quotas. When other companies send salespeople, Standard Sense Qualified Technicians is just part of. Carrier, turn to the experts. Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks jnm displays wants you help shoot an omaha storm chasers game memorial park display or any of the major shows in western iowa and all of nebraska if you like to travel jnm covers nebraska kansas and most of missouri they offer free training and great daily pay rates which makes it a perfect part-time job visit jnm displays.com and click the join our team tab to find out more jnm fireworks There's no better thing than to help others in their time of need. John Bishop here to invite you to be an organ and tissue donor at goodguyssavelives.com. 
anyone can register, regardless of age or medical condition. Donor hearts and lungs save lives. Donor tissue makes recovery from surgery easier. Next time you renew your license, check that organ and tissue donor box or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. Howdy, Greg Wagner joining you from the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Time now for another Nebraska Outdoor Update. Say there's a lot to do this season in Nebraska's outdoors. There's always hiking in the state parks. There's bird watching. There's trout stream fishing action. There's scouting for that spring wild turkey hunting trip. And there's looking for shed deer antlers in your favorite woods. So there's no reason to be a couch potato, is there? No. Get outdoors and enjoy. Well, it's time, time to get all your new permits and stamps for hunting, fishing, fur harvesting, and state parks. Time to check your motorboat registration for renewal. Time to make those cabin and camping reservations in the state parks if you haven't done that already. And time to go over all of your outdoor gear for spring and summer. Get more information on Nebraska's outdoor scene by going to the Game and Parks website, OutdoorNebraska.gov. And that'll wrap it up. I'm Greg Wagner with Nebraska Game and Parks. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that we can give our daughters everything they need to grow and learn. But not every child can focus on classes and play dates. Nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. face hunger. That's one in six. School lunch might be their only meal each day. And it's heartbreaking to imagine any child going to bed hungry. We're dreaming of a perfect day when kids can smile, play, and just be kids without worrying about where their next meal will come from. Feeding America is working to make that perfect day a reality. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste. That food is given to families and children in need. Being a kid should be about doing things that make an ordinary day extraordinary. Learning to play an instrument, building a sandcastle, hosting tea parties. Hunger should never be an obstacle to growing up. You can help end childhood hunger in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Like eating out? Like saving money? Then get to Cobb's at 180th and Center, Shadow Lake Town Center, or 72nd and Jones for their daily specials. Tuesday is $3 off all burgers and sandwiches. Wednesday, buy any specialty pizza and get a one-topping 50% off. Then Thursday, all wings are a dollar each when you order 10. And this just in, all Cops locations now offer their own delivery service. Click CopsPizza.com to see the menu. Cops, pizza, and so much more. Jacob Bigelow is coming up in a couple minutes. He has thoughts on Caitlin Clark as a watcher of ball. He knows ball. Got sad last night. It's one shining moment. Rolled on, and we finally got to the end of the song. After the bridge, you know, it's more than a race. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Oh, two forks. That's good. I had a uh, fork incident because we got some thick lasagna. It snapped in two. Just ripped completely off. Yeah. I was like, oh, he lost a tine on his fork. Nope. Whole thing snapped in two. Yep. Um. Anyway, what whoa, whoa, what was I getting into there? I lost myself on the on the fork talk. Uh, Caitlin Clark. That's all I had for you. Oh, I was singing "One Shining Moment." Sorry, "One mm-hmm. Shining yeah. Moment." You guys Bigelow. need to get over yourselves. How about you? I bet there's a. I bet there's like the the Venn diagram of people who didn't enjoy the eclipse yesterday and also didn't enjoy "One Shining Moment." It's like a circle. It's just one <laughs> flat circle. You guys just hate joy. That's the problem. Hey, you guys, watch your one shining moment. Have fun with it. I'm changing the channel. Well, if it, if it's a if it's about going to bed, nope. You're actively changing it during one shining moment because you don't want to see it that bad. Uh, that's crazy. I will change it before. Yeah, because you're done, and you're you're done watching tele. Yeah. You're done watching sports for the night. You're like, I didn't watch well, the end of that game. What you're saying is the wait was too long, right? Under I understand that. If the clock hits zero, we get a couple reaction shots. And did you watch it on Twitter? No, I didn't actually. Okay, so you hate it. You just don't like. You just don't like it. You're I, actively avoiding it. I if if it hits me in the face, I will watch it. But 
I'm not seeking it out. I'm not sitting and waiting for it. Too much going on last night. It's like air to me or being on air. On air. <laughs> I love it. I, I had my line for when it would happen. I was very close. I said, I said with before the under four media timeout, I tweeted, here is my time, 11.06 p.m., that I think one shining moment will start. It ended up starting at 11.03 p.m. Nice. That's midnight on the East Coast. It, oh, my God. It is. Oh, what a late start yeah. to a basketball Here's the other game. thing, guys. We gotta, oh, my gosh. Thank you. Josh, great take. Grow up. All right? Be an adult. Grow up. Sometimes, like... The game happens at 8.20 every year. This is not the first time this happens. Is, the national championship game for football is also on a Monday, and it also happens late, and you also have to stay up late. It's an event. Do I love it? No. No, I don't love it. I, but it's a, like we got to stop thinking this is some sort of revelation every year. We have to send the person who put it at 8.20 into jail tomorrow. Because, no, it's, it's okay. You guys are going to survive. The, the tweets start coming in from the East Coast at about 2 o'clock, like, Oh my gosh, I got to take a nap because this game starts so late. Oh my god, it's midnight. Calm down. Yeah. Like that's not it's you're you're it's not a sacrifice on your part to stay up to watch to the end of that basketball game. Uh t- a email in from the Equitable Bank inbox from John. Hi John. Football is bad and one shining moment is good. Your takes are getting as bad as Jimmy's. Whoa! Wow, wow, wow. Shots fired. I still haven't talked about wrestling on this show, probably cuz I don't care about wrestling i mean i got you if you need uh chad writes in on caitlin clark hi chad he says uh well not to put too much pressure on someone but i believe nebraska has an incoming local freshman that just finished up a fantastic high school career to say that no one could ever do what cc just did is a little ridiculous wait did i say that i i didn't like well she is what i said was she's the greatest college basketball women's college basketball player of all time I believe that to be the case. Yes. Is it likely that that is achieved again in four more years? Like, no, it's it's not. It's never happened before. Yeah. And people will say, well, well, she didn't win a championship. She did not. She did not. Still really good. Dan Marino, still really good. Mike Trout, still really good. You'll see what happens next year when she's not there. It'll be it'll be a different ball game for them. You'll see what happens when uh, Zach Eady isn't at Purdue. It'll be a different ball game. See what happens when Ryan Clockburner is not at Creighton. Ooh. It'll be a different ball game. That won't be next year. Might be. Maybe not. It might be. We don't know for sure. Also, speaking of big stars of college basketball, Indiana State forward Robbie Avila, a.k.a. Josh, remember the nickname? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has entered the transfer portal. Interesting. Um, a local reporter uh, that covers the Missouri Valley Conference says they are not. They they have been informed that Robbie Avila isn't expected to be in the transfer portal today, but in the coming days. Um, and. Did, now their coach left. They went to they went to St. Louis. Uh, yes, I'm seeing a lot of people saying that. And by the way, th- that he's follow a lot of those players shirts, are following him. By the way, all of Indiana State's starting five is in the transfer portal. God, how hard is it to be a Missouri Valley team? Oof. Much less a good Missouri Valley yeah. team at this point. Oh. You better be a good coach because you're going to have to figure that out. You better watch out, A-10. <laughs> yeah. St. Louis about to run rough shot over you. Also, how about this? So this, this is the same guy, Rick Simler. Um, Sports 10, who he works for, is being told Syracuse, uh, Sycamore big man uh, Robbie Avila in the NIL open market at his next school is looking at a minimum of $250,000 NIL payday. If you're wondering... Indiana State's NIL pool is in between three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars. John Calipari could afford him. Oh yeah, when he woo pig sueys at Arkansas. Can't wait for that video. Yeah. I I hope we get it honestly, just for the fun of the video. 
No, I'm not going to do it. Still nothing official in that regard quite yet. Uh, Coming back, we'll talk some more hoops with our good friend Jacob Bigelow, wrap up the uh, college basketball season, talk Dan Hurley, talk Caitlin Clark, talk Transfer Portal, talk new Nebraska ball players from the Summit League, mid-major conference. Very hard to live that way. Uh, We'll hit that all with Jacob next on the Connor Amper Show on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. When it comes to concrete repair, Everlevel has some serious game. Coach Greg McDermott here to coach you on why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. They've got the fundamentals to fix your cracked and uneven concrete, and their products will give you the best defense against future damage. It's a fraction of the price compared to replacement, and their solutions come with a long-term transferable warranty. Working with Everlevel is a slam dunk. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today for your free inspection. Dingers, blast, moonshots, whatever you call them. Everyone loves home runs, and with FanDuel's Dinger Tuesdays, you can love them even more. Who doesn't like the long ball? That's right, Dinger Tuesdays are back for another season on America's number one sports book. Just bet on a player to homer, and FanDuel will give you $5 in bonus bets for every home run hit during that game. As if you need another reason to love the long ball, love me some Otani, love me some Mookie Betts, love me some Aaron Judge, you can love FanDuel. Just visit them now. FanDuel.com slash the zone to get on all the Dinger Tuesday action. Don't forget to use that promo code FanDuel.com slash the zone. Make every moment more with FanDuel. It is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. 21 over present Iowa. Bonus issued is not withdrawable. Bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Maximum bonus $25 per game. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 bets off. How powerful is Cox Fiber? Powerful enough to let your band members in Vegas, Phoenix, and Omaha jam like you're all in the same garage. Introducing Cox Fiber from the company with the fastest download speeds eight years in a row. It's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, always building better. Limited availability in select areas. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and restrictions may apply. Analysis by Eucalypt Speed Test Intelligence in Las Vegas, Omaha, Phoenix. Fixed media download speeds Q2 2016 to Q3 2023. Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks jnm displays wants you help shoot an omaha storm chasers game memorial park display or any of the major shows in western iowa and all of nebraska if you like to travel jnm covers nebraska kansas and most of missouri they offer free training and great daily pay rates which makes it a perfect part-time job visit jnm displays.com and click the join our team tab to find out more jnm fireworks Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash radio. Through HIMSS, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at HIMSS, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash radio and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash radio. That's hymns.com slash radio for your free online visit. H-I-M-S dot com slash R-A-D-I-O. Hey, baseball fans, join the Blur Tailgate at Hilton Omaha this June for our 12th annual hospitality event during the College Baseball Championship Series. Book an experience for your clients or employees with an inclusive bar, buffet, TVs, music, and tailgate games. Secure your spot today and let Blur Events take care of all the work so you can enjoy the day. Plus, we're just steps away from Charles Schwab Field. Visit BlurEvents.com to book your group, buy tickets, or learn about sponsorships. That's BlurEvents.com, your college baseball and football tailgate destination. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZ and Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. He's heating up. That's the country song, right? Remember when. Thank that. you. Chicka Bigelow. Yeah, well, yeah if I, when, whenever my open is concocted, throw that in there. He's on fire! Chicka Bigelow, Huskers Illustrated. 
on the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Boom shakalaka! All right, so John Calipari has just tweeted a video of himself sitting on his couch. It's very grainy. <laughs> but the first comment that I see is from Mac. It says, quality of the video is frying me, dog. Oh, my God. I love internet talk. What is the content of the article? So or the, or the... there's no there's no words. It's just a message to BBN, Big Blue Nation. I get through a minute of it during the Whoa. break. It's three minutes and 53 seconds long. And by the end of the first minute, he starts talking about the, he talks about how great of a job it is. And then at the end of the first minute, he goes, I began to realize over the last couple of weeks that the program maybe needed a new voice. And that's where I had to stop because we're back on the radio now. A perfect segue into Jacob Bigelow of Huskers Illustrated, the Stretch Big Pod. Jacob, good afternoon. How are you? I am good. How are you, Happer, in this day of mourning the end of all? Very sad. Very, very sad. Uh, any thoughts on Calipari and his four minute? I'm sure you haven't got the chance to watch the four minute video, considering it just came out less than four minutes ago. Um, but that seems I, that seems like yeah. it's happening at this point. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, 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 it seems like it's very real. Uh, Sunday was a interesting, interesting day uh, in my world. Um, figured I was just going to watch the women's the women's championship game and go about my day and prepare for the new week. And then I got some text from people close to another popular name in that in the Arkansas coaching search saying it ain't happening. Then the Calipari stuff came up and it, it all just like watching it unfold throughout the day. <laughs> like I, I will, I will remember where I, I'm, I was sitting, uh, who I was with. I mean, it, it just, I mean, it was, it was incredible. It was, it was hilarious. Well, the, the first tweet yeah. came out. It was like, okay, guy, give me a break. You know, yeah. You know, some, was like a random guy from Arkansas. He's like, all right, give me a break, buddy. You know, in, in your dreams. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Credit to that guy. I think he was like the sports director at uh, Little Rock, Arkansas TV station was like the first person who put it out there. And I saw that and I'm like, and I'm like, this poor, you know, yeah, if, if he's wrong, like this is going to be, this yeah. is going to be bad. But he went, he wound up, he wound up nailing it. And, uh, you know, but, I mean, I, the perfect summation of the whole situation I saw in a tweet the other day was the heir of a processed food company forking over part of his fortune to bring in his friend slash <laughs> blue chip coach to his favorite basketball program. That's what everybody exactly dreams of. College sport yeah. is all about. Yeah, that's what it's that's what it's all about. I mean, it and Arkansas. Like many people look at that job off first glance and go, Arkansas basketball. They play in an enormous arena that is full all the time. People down there, I mean, you saw how that fan base gets for baseball. If basketball's winning games, those fans go nuts. There are plenty of other rich families around that athletic department. Mm -hmm. that if they're willing to go all in, they'll go all in to get what they want. And uh, I'm interested to see uh, what the what the you know the first year, the coming years for Arkansas basketball. Um, is Drake an Arkansas fan now? Like I have, I have so many yeah. questions. There's so many questions still to be answered. But yeah, Cal to Arkansas, it, it, that was the ultimate. What a world! I thought what you nailed it though. Fun. Like the, uh, the 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 funny, you know, the question is like, all right, why, why would he end up? How would he go to Arkansas from Kentucky? And then you think about the way it ended at Kentucky and how the last few years have gone. And you're like, eh, maybe you just kind of want it out. And then you're like, oh, they have the. Uh, the Tyson food guy, the Tyson chicken guy, and the Walmart family who's willing to give him $15 million and, you know, they'll, they'll use $5 million of it every single year to uh, build his roster via the best, you know, 10 recruits in the country. It's like, actually, what's not like to like about the Arkansas job? It's pretty good. Yeah, sounds like a good deal to me. I mean, we were unfortunately robbed. I think if Cal was back in Lexington next season, that basketball season around there would have given the 2022 Nebraska football season a run for its money in terms of toxicity <laughs> oh, and yeah. all the everything like everything going on I don't know if you know what by game could have been the Georgia Southern for Cal you know on their schedule next year but I think it would have been would have been right up there in terms of toxicity but yeah there's there's things to like about Arkansas um, and there's you know there's a uh, there's yeah it, it's it sounds pretty nice to me 
especially, you know, it sounds like a clean break for both sides. Hey, Cal and, uh, Kentucky. Yes, definitely does. Uh, just to, to put this one to bed, uh, we do have a tweet from uh, Mitch Barnhart, who's the AD at Kentucky. He says, we're appreciative of John Calipari leading our program for the last 15 years, adding to the legacy of championship success at Kentucky. We're grateful to John and his many contributions to the University of our State, both on and off the court. The second tweet says, we are working diligently to hire a proven, highly dedicated coach who embraces this importance of uh, of this uh, program to our fans and the state of Kentucky. So the Calipari move, Jacob, was the was the second in the must domino, the, the must bust domino uh-huh. effect. Um, and now whoever takes that job at Kentucky, you would assume that there's going to be a long line of domino effects that come off of that one as well. Oh, absolutely. And this all started, this all started back to a connection to my, 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 uh, some friends of mine. It all started because SMU blew a 15 point lead in their last game of the regular season. That's right. Uh, Andy Enfield goes to win. SMU. <laughs> yep. SMU blows a 15 point lead to UAB in the last game of their regular season. They fire a coach who hadn't had a pretty bad record. But if you want to talk about another place that's got plenty of money uh, laying around and people willing to go all in, SMU, um, I'm not saying they're going to make too much noise in the ACC, but there's a lot of money down there. So he, Andy Enfield jumped ship from USC to SMU to beat the posse, basically. Muscleman also kind of, in a way to beat the posse, jumps. <laughs> it's three beat the posse moves. It really is. Set, that are all going to set this, set this coach in carousel for another round after we had seen some early movement and now it's going to get weird. But, uh, I do know that, uh, just a couple of minutes ago, the Arkansas board of trustees started meeting at one o'clock. So I believe that we will, we seems there's some finality from the Kentucky side. Yeah. We're just waiting to hear from Arkansas and we may get that within, within the hour as well. I'll tell you what uh, though, um, whoever, whoever they hire at Kentucky, that cannot be, a uh, guy who's fleeing a situation. I I, I don't think I, like what kind of person and what kind of hire can Kentucky make to replace John Calipari? Cause it's a very, very toxic and interesting situation down there. Oh yeah. I mean, if you want to talk about a fishbowl, I mean, Kentucky basketball, I mean, that is, that is, that's an aquarium. That's not just a bowl, but that's, you know, there's, there's plenty of fish, uh, plenty of stuff going on around that program. Um, I think it's got to be somebody who's pretty level-headed, someone who's got you know a track record of sustained success, um, somebody who has the right personality. Um, I, I that's where I kind of you know the Dan Hurley thing. Like I don't know that personality in Kentucky. Like it could either be really great or really horrible. The mesh, you know, if that were to come to be. But uh, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna shoot, swing for the fences. Uh, they're gonna have. They're going to have plenty of money. Uh, plenty of people are either going to get paid and or take the, or you know at least get offered or talk talk about the job. And I'm, I'm interested to see which way they go. Yeah, I don't think it'll be. I don't think it'll be Dan Hurley. It just feels like he's in way too good of a situation at UConn right now. But I mean, there's a lot of things that money could fix, and I, I guess I wouldn't shut the door to it. But um, with that being said, it's a good transition into something that I've talked about a lot today, and obviously you noticed from watching last night. Um, what do you think of? What do you think of Dan Hurley? I'll just leave it right there for you. Open-ended question. What do you think of Dan Hurley? I love him. <laughs> I, lo- I love the guy. I think I, 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 part of me hates that I love that I love him and the way he carries himself. But like, I'll just say this: like, coaches are competitors of the highest order, and in a sport where a lot of coaches, whether it be their sideline demeanor or in front of the media. I mean, they have the personality of an earthworm. There isn't much going on. It's just a lot of coach speak. They're, you're not going to get anything interesting. And college basketball needs characters. And Danny Hurley is certainly a character. He's a character that sticks out. I had people trying to tell me last night, don't defend his immaturity and lack of self-control. And I'm like, I have seen coaches who are genuinely immature and genuinely lack self-control. You know what they don't do? Win national championships. Yeah. Yeah. They don't, they, 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 they don't, they don't, coaches who are genuinely immature and don't have self-control, they don't win one title, let alone back-to-back titles. And we saw a team in that UConn group that took after him. They didn't waver from, you know, the, the you know, the whatever the pyramid of their program is, they didn't waver from. And they took after their head coach, you know, 
us against everybody, life and death, every possession, and you know that a masterful coaching job by him. And uh, you know, as I, you know, obviously people don't enjoy, you know, people people get too animated on the sidelines, but I'm all for it. Anyway. I think college he... basketball needs character. College basketball needs characters. Yeah, we've seen some big time character coaches, the guys who've been around forever, retire these last few years. And I think Danny Hurley can take up the mantle as one of the faces of college basketball. I think every, I think he's actually a mastermind and a genius secretly because I think everything he does has a purpose. Like I threw out the idea earlier that all that stuff, um, you know, the antics or whatever during a game, it's all, it's, it's all just to get his team to try and respond in one way or the other. Like I I think, um, and you've, you've been around a lot of coaches, Jacob, like the coaches that have a bet, the best, feel and pulse on what their team needs at any given moment or always you have to have a requisite amount of talent and you have to understand what you're doing schematically and all this stuff. But like, I think a big part of the difference the last couple of years with Nebraska has been the coach having a really good understanding of what he needs, what he wants from a personality perspective. And those guys looking and, and, and feeling more like him. Um, and Mm -hmm. like, there's a reason why they've had that success now. I think that's as big of a, a big a part of coaching as anything there is, as anything else um, in, in that we have in, in college sports right now. Oh, I completely agree. I mean, I know a very a very popular major or minor for guys in college who go on to be coaches is psychology. Um, the coach that I was around the most for three years in Lincoln, he had a he had a he had a um, late edu- he had a, like a educational psychology minor in college, mm-hmm. <laughs> and he he. he tried to use use part of that you know in coaching to the to the best of his ability and you know it's, it's very popular i mean I, mean, I and another example i think of is Pati- is patino when he just ripped every yes. guy on his roster to thread and then they went on a winning streak <laughs> and people were like what the hell is this man saying he hates his players he's you know he's he's he's, he's pissed but his guys responded <laughs> they responded and they got hot and they went on a, on a winning streak so obviously Rick had a good feel for what would get his guys to respond. That's just another example, but yeah, I agree. Uh, one more topical topic before I, I'll ask you one Nebraska ball question and get you out of here. Um, what? Why do you think Kalen Clark is so polarizing, which is the topic we were discussing about 10 minutes ago before we had you on? Uh, nationally or locally? Where do I start? Um, let's, go na- <laughs> let's go nationally. Um, locally, I think we have a decent grasp on it. Uh, nationally, I'm I, I'm more curious about all the things that go into that the thing that the thing that get, has me confused is the like uh the older like wnba players not like being yes. welcoming or accepting of her that's that's what has me confused most because like you know the older generations in the nba they embrace the new generation head on they'll you know they'll have their guys they like they'll sing their praises but yeah, nationally, I think it probably has to do with some of the on court stuff, you know, some of the you know, the coverage being a little, you know, over the top sometimes no, sure. sometimes. But yeah. I mean there's there's and probably the the idea, you know, that you know, some of the major media networks will, you know, make it seem like she's the only star in the women's game when there are others. I mean, there are plenty of others. We saw it in this tournament. We saw Cardozo at South Carolina in the title game, Paige Beckers against Iowa in the Final Four, Juju Watkins, Tana Hidalgo. I mean, there, there, there are there's plenty of star power in the women's game. I thought there was more star power in the women's tournament than the men's tournament. Yeah, but, there was. You know, some some people, you know, try, you know, would take the way that you know Caitlin is covered and had, you know, that a way of trying to make it seem like she's the only star and she is the women's game, which may may play a part in it. Yeah, I, there, there's a lot of stuff in there, but. I mean, America, we, we, we just brought her up for 10 seconds. I wasn't planning on spending 20 minutes on it. All of a sudden we get three phone calls, 19 people watch on 19 million people watch on, on television or 24 million people or whatever it was like something about her triggers something in, in, in everyone. And it's like, we all have to have a thought on it. It's, it's really pretty amazing. No, it is really and truly. And then, you know, they're, how about this? I mean, the, the WNBA season starts in five weeks. <laughs> the draft. I know. Draft. I saw that. I was like, whoa, she's yeah. going to be in the, the WNBA in a couple of days. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. The draft is next week. The season just ended. The draft is next week. <laughs> and then she'll be in training camp before we know it. There is no, no downtime. 
Well, good. I, I don't think America has Caitlin Clark fatigue yet. That's for sure. So, I mean, they're, they're, we're going we're gonna to watch. This might be the best time. In this case, like, I would normally say it's very odd to have a season, professional season, start a month after the, the college regular season ends or the college season ends. Uh, but in this case, I actually think it's kind of advantageous for that league. That's, that's probably a good thing because they could just continue to capitalize off of that tournament success. Um, yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, Jacob Bigelow of uh, Huskers Illustrated. With okay, uh, one one thing on uh, Andrew Morgan. Uh, is this what, what kind of addition is this for Nebraska? I know there's still like you got the good news last week of Gary and Bryce Williams coming back, which is which is good news for them. Still not sure on Mast. Um, I guess what's the outlook right now for Nebraska basketball on their roster? Uh, they still have some, you know, they've still got, uh, you know, I think they could uh, get some more good news within the next week. Uh, they've, you know, the tea leaves are good on some, some of the other guys they've reached out to. Um, obviously it'll mean more if they can get some guys on campus. Uh, the Andrew Morgan addition, you know, I think, I don't think he, I don't think he's a starter. I mean, I think that, I think just looking at him, I think he, you know, the assuming rink mass were to return and which is an assumption and it could age terribly. I think you look at Andrew Morgan as a guy who does provide something that no one on the roster this past year did, and that's a chance to give Rink Mast a rest. Um, we talked, we talked mm-hmm. all year about how tired Rink Mast looked, all that sweat, all them scratches. Um, if him and Andrew Morgan are on the same roster, you know that gives Rink Mast a chance for for a rest, for you know to not be playing as high high minutes, high usage. Um, you know, Andrew Morgan took, he only took 33 three point attempts last year and close to 300 shots. So him and rink mass aren't the same. Uh, he's not a high volume, you know, he's definitely more of a post up big, not exactly a rim protector, but he'll definitely play more. Yeah. Interesting. It's a, I, I agree with you. It's a, it's a good depth pickup there for Nebraska. All right, Jacob, great stuff as always. Uh, this is, uh, this is an important time for you. So lock in and we'll, we'll do it again next week. Absolutely. A lot of caffeine for me uh, this time of year, but that's all the time too. But I appreciate the time like always have. That is Jacob Bigelow of Huskers Illustrated and uh, of Twitter as well, where you can find the upgraded John Calipari video. Yeah, he took it down they reposted and then reposted it as a better version of itself. Still on the couch and still almost four minutes long, but he's leaving Kentucky. And so Arkansas will officially announce that, I would assume, in the coming minutes, hours, you know, something like that, probably before tonight. We'll be back. More up next on 1620 The Zone. Previously on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. Chris Fetters covering the Washington Huskies joins us. Gannon was in Palm Springs last night with the president of the university and the new football coach that he hired for a major donor event. Literally, that thing wrapped up, and I have to expect that right after that happened, Gannon was in the middle of trying to finalize the field at Nebraska. Unsportsmanlike Conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. Weekdays 2 to 6 on 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from a Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV Newswatch 7 on 1620 The Zone. A beautiful spring day on the way. Tuesday, expect mostly sunny skies, wind out of the west, just 5 to 15 miles per hour with highs in the upper 60s. I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV Newswatch 7. More with Connor and Josh after this. We're going to have an extensive professional relationship, my man. On 1620. The Zone. Is reviewing life insurance on your to-do list? Now's the perfect time to add it. A friend recently told me that securing life insurance sooner rather than later can help you lock in lower rates for years to come. So I bumped this up on my list and got it done. I called Select Quote and couldn't believe how easy and affordable life insurance is. I'm 40 and got a $500,000 policy for $16 a month. My husband's also 40 and his $500,000 policy was only $18 a month. Plus, with Select Quote same day coverage, there was no medical exam required and we were covered by the time we hung up. Knowing I have this checked off my list feels amazing, but the peace of mind knowing my family is protected feels even better. Call Select Quote 1 800 670 5151. That's 1 800 670 5151. Or go to SelectQuote.com to get your free quote today. 1 800 670 5151. Details on example rate at SelectQuote.com. DQ presents. 
the sound of BOGO-free Blizzard treats in the DQ app. It's the sound of downloading the DQ app, redeeming the sweetest BOGO-free Blizzard deal, telling all your friends, and heading to DQ. For BOGO-free any size Blizzard treats only in the DQ app for a limited time. Download it today. At participating locations, limitations apply. DQ. Happy tastes good. Don't miss this week's Zone Deal. This week's half-off deal is Cops. Receive two $25 gift vouchers for just $25. Cops makes delicious pizza, fresh salads, and tasty charred wings. For the basic menu, click copspizza.com. And for the extended menu, visit them at Shadow Lake Town Center, 180th and Center, and the newly reopened 72nd and Jones locations. Zone deals go fast. 9 a.m. Friday, 1620thezone.com. Guys, let's have a conversation. Let's say you've been losing interest in your spouse. You got low libido. You can't focus on things. And you're wondering, what is going on? It may be low testosterone. Mentality is here for you. With their FDA-approved testosterone treatment, their board-certified physicians who work with most insurance companies, they can diagnose the symptoms of low testosterone and take care of it. Schedule an appointment today. Go to their website, lowtusa.com. Take back your life, men. Mentality, lowtusa.com. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. EquitableOnline.com. Here's a text from the 402. My 402. Tell Josh O that the denigrated Steelhouse Theater that he doesn't like just announced that Pete Davidson is going to be there in May. Is that cool enough for Josh? No, not that literally doesn't move the needle Nothing, for me at all. No, I can't believe you're a hater of the Steelhouse. You're the first ever hater of the Steelhouse. I'm just saying it doesn't need to exist. Well, I mean, I'm we sure have, it's a fine venue run by fine people. We have many things that don't need to exist. Pro wrestling. Who cares about that? It, it's, Apparently it's, everybody. It's I don't a know. valid art form. Anyway. So you did like WrestleMania then, Josh? It's the greatest WrestleMania of all time. Why? Why? To Why? WWE. Well, who cares? <laughs> Was it according to you? I had a fun weekend. Yes. <laughs> You didn't like it that I much. I did like it. It was fine. Just say it. It was fine. It was like any other WrestleMania. No, it was it was definitely bigger than most WrestleManias. Did you see Jason Kelsey was there? No, I didn't see any of it. He took his shirt off. I didn't see I didn't even see how did I not see that? Great question. I don't know. Probably because I was in a hole in Vegas somewhere. <laughs> um, a couple of things here before we uh before we get out of here. So this uh the results of a survey, usually when I get all the emails with the results of surveys, I just immediately delete them. Sorry, survey people. Um, and because of that, I missed this. But our good friend Eric Olson from the Associated Press has our backs. He tweeted out this survey this morning. Subject line. Americans feel down for two and a half hours after a bad sports outcome, study finds. On average, American sports fanatic, fanatics feel down for about two and a half hours after a bad game from their favorite team or athlete. But there's a story inside the story. They also did this, as they do in these stupid surveys, state by state. And what they have found is that Nebraskans, people from Nebraska, recover from their sports pain the fastest that they feel pain for the shortest amount of time before they decide we are over it. We're built for this. Only on average of 22 minutes do Nebraskans feel pain. Go ahead, torture me. I don't care. Doesn't I mean that actually kind of tracks, doesn't it? It does. A hundred percent. Okay. Um, here's a little blurb about Nebraska. With an astonishing average of just 22 minutes, Nebraska residents seem to swiftly recover from a defeat. The same holds true for sports enthusiasts in Mississippi, with an average of 25 minutes. And also Minnesota. Minnesota is able to shake the blues off within a half hour, averaging a recovery time of 28 minutes. The methodology here 
I'm sure you're wondering, because I am too, is this. In March 2024, we conducted a nationwide survey involving 20, uh, 2,137 American sports enthusiasts. All Of all participants, 38% were female, 60% were male, 1% identified as non-binary, and another 1% identified as other. The average age of respondents was 41 years old. This survey was done by promoguy.us. So, you, so know you know it's, it's real. Yeah. <laughs> so you know it's real. Josh, thoughts on uh, Nebraska's Nebraskans getting over things very quickly? Well, I mean, look at the tweets of Jack Mitchell. Now, I mean, he's sad for a little bit, but yeah, he then they, gets right back on that horse. Amazingly, they bounce right back. Yeah. There's, there is kind of this never-ending, um, you know, never-ending hope. There's always something. There's always a little carrot at the end, a little, little pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You might never get it, but it, it is there. And so that keeps people coming back. So I think that tracks pretty well. Always willing to talk ourselves into the unthinkable happening. Jeff writes in. Hi, Jeff. I'll dunk on our, I'm going to dunk on ourselves, Nebraska fans. It's because we've gotten way, uh, gotten used to losing so much. And uh, another text of the 402, the one that uh, said those things about you in the Steelhouse. That survey just means that total apathy is set in. Good news. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to read that part, but yeah. No. Was it a crack on my boy, Pete Davids? No. Okay. No, no, no. No, it was not. I just don't want to say it. I just don't want to. It, okay. pr- it probably is harmless, but I just don't want to no, say it out fine. loud. You said that one thing last week, so you're good. Do you, mm, what was it about? The lady who caught the Shohei Otani ball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Only once. <laughs> Only once. Her name was Ambar, if I remember correctly. That's right. Uh, Terrence on the YouTube has hey, a comment. Says, uh, live in Nebraska and see Nebraska fans lose and their whole day is ruined. Would love to know who they surveyed here. Oh, is that the theory that they maybe surveyed dirty, filthy j and that they recovered from things? And why did they recover from things so quickly? Because they're able to just change the color of their shirt, Josh. Maybe that's why Nebraskans recover so quickly from horrible, painful losses. Because they just put a new shirt on. Are you sure? That's the theory that Terrence is offering on on the YouTube there. Oh. I think that has to be it. That must be it. You think so, huh? I don't know. I don't think any of this is real, but it's an interesting uh, thought process. Um, one more thing. Josh, you brought up the story. We only got like two seconds for it. Um, Perfect amount of time for it. So Cameron Brink, the uh, star basketball player at Stanford who has the glamour shot as her head shot. That's right. So they always put the, the they put the faces of the girls basketball players up there and they're like, here's Caitlin Clark. And it's, you know, the school picture. She's sitting straight ahead and she's looking right at it. And it is... Uh, Angel Reese school picture. She's sitting straight ahead and looking straight at the camera and or Jazz Shelley and or Haley Van Lith or whatever it is. And they just, you know, they got the normal school picture for Cameron Brink. She's like flipping her hair over <laughs> and like smiling and like looking out of the corner of her eye. It's very funny. Um, now she's somebody that I could understand why people would watch. Interesting. Uh, she has a take on why she is leaving Stanford. She's going into the WNBA draft. Uh, she was on the Bird and Tarazi show. Tarazi show. Uh, I'm, they, one of those people has takes about things. Um, and uh, she opened up a bit about her decision. She, she said, quote, I think the biggest thing was I kind of felt like I had a lot of gaps to fill in. But, you know, I feel like I could learn as a rookie and being a rookie, there's still a learning curve. So I'm looking forward to to uh, just giving myself grace and accepting that it will be build a building year for me. So I think I'm kind of tired of school. Stanford is no joke. So as much as I love my coaching staff and my teammates, I don't want to travel across the country. Stanford, as we know, is very famously and very normally moving to the ACC next year. Atlantic Coast. Yeah, what about it? And it may have cost Stanford a year of very good basketball player, Cameron Brink. It's odd. I got to tell you, 
This is going to be so weird. Stanford and Cal and the ACC. What are they even going to do? You thought USC and UCLA joining the Big Ten was weird. How about this? This is one of the dumbest things of all yeah, time. That's, I mean, they're going to play basketball games. They're going to fly over there and then they're going to stay over there for like 10 days and play three or four games. I've done a lot of half cross country travel in the last two weeks. Sure. That's a grind in and of itself. Full cross country. That's double, Josh. And there won't even be an eclipse during it. No. So, so you won't want to do it. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, there might be something to that. Now, those schools weren't necessarily at the top of their game in terms of NIL and recruiting anyway. Um, yeah, it could very much be an excuse. but Not necessarily a good, uh, you know, not a, not a good poster board there for the future of Stanford athletics. Yeah, it's definitely given their current athletes something to think about like oh do i do, do i need to leave i'm a west leave? i'm a west coast guy i'd I'm like to, to stay on the west coast I could, boise state if, if you're a west coast guy and you you know played all your sports on the west coast throughout your entire life and you want to stay on the west coast there's no reason for you to go to stanford anymore oregon state washington state wazoo san diego state things of that nature you see irvine all right, quick time out. We'll come back with the poll question. Stay with Watch on the other side on 1620 Zone. Remember, no matter how you listen, it's still AM radio. 1620 The Zone. Host is roasting every morning. Host is roasting every day. Put your coffee department in good hands with Host Coffee Service, providing direct delivery and loaned coffee equipment with service programs. If you're ready to change to a better coffee provider, it's time. For host coffee. Omaha's best coffee since 1972. Host coffee is always roasting something good for you. Are Nebraska craft beers and ciders important to you? Whether you just love Nebraska brewed beers and ciders or you're a full-fledged craft brewery, there are benefits to membership for anyone with the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild. Their sole mission is to foster and help grow the Nebraska-centric brewing community. Become a member today at Nebraska.beer and help advance the craft beer and cider industry in the state of Nebraska. Find out more about the Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild at Nebraska.beer. News Talk 1290 Coil is your radio home for Omaha Storm Chasers baseball. Proud AAA affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. Tune in to hear every pitch, every hit, and every out as the Chasers play at Warner Park and across the International League in 2024. With the voice of the Omaha Storm Chasers, Nick Batters, on News Talk 1290 Coil. Tune in to 1290 Coil all season long for your Omaha Storm Chasers baseball as they take on the International League. It's Storm Chasers baseball on 1290 Coil. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circa Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircaSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives. 
but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramps corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramps software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC Terms and Conditions Apply. All right, poll questions at Happer Show on the JTech Constructions on Twitter feed. All right, I didn't see any of them from yesterday, so I got to take a look here. Oh, yeah, take a gander. Have a lot of things happened since 2017. Is walking down the grocery store aisle and picking up a specific brand of mac and cheese an inalienable right? Love that. Is the sun overrated? Most voted on poll question of yesterday. (laughs) I'm going to vote no on that one. It's actually... Does quite a bit. Probably. Actually, I think it probably pulls more weight than you think it does. Yeah. All right. To today, would you fill out a bracket for the twelve team, or will you fill out a bracket for the twelve team college football playoff? Yeah, I think I will. No, I don't think I will. Fifty five percent say yes. Do people really love cocaine? Interesting question. Who is people? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Kind of seems like it, yeah. 72% say yes. Oh, wow. Do you relate to oil? No. I do not? No. 67% agree. Which was better, Oppenheimer or UConn versus Purdue? Give me Oppenheimer, baby. Give me UConn-Purdue. 68% said Oppenheimer. Yeah. Is pro wrestling relatable to everyone? Most voted on poll question of the day. No. No, I'm going to, I like pro wrestling, but no, no. 79% say no. Okay. Um, big ball pit question mark. Yes, definitely. No, no, thank you. 53% say no. And finally, maybe my favorite one. Do people watch Caitlin Clark because she resembles an actress from Chicago PD? Couldn't possibly be true, (laughs) but I like the theory. Was that Rick? Yeah. Rick's been responsible for some of our best poll questions mm-hmm. over the years. Um, I'll vote no on that one, but I like the idea. 83% say no. Well, I mean, you'd think that just the ratings for Chicago PD would be higher. Yeah, if people really like that actress that much. Uh, 4.75 million people watched the most recent episode. That's of pretty good. Chicago PD. Oh, yeah, it's a hit, baby. Season 11. Those are the poll questions. Josh, what are we watching tonight? We are watching the NBA. I told you these games were on yesterday, but there were no NBA games on yesterday because mm. of that basket, that college basketball game. Uh, Celtics, Bucks, 630 TNT. Connor, this is number one versus number two in the East, and I'll use the same joke I used on John Schreiner yesterday. There are 15 games separating these two teams. Mm. Uh, Warriors, Lakers at 9 o'clock after that, and uh, 7 o'clock on ESPN News. It's game one of the G League finals. Oh, great. Oklahoma City Blue taking on the main Celtics. Best of three series, but you probably knew that already, Connor. I love I love the idea that the main Celtics exist. That's awesome. That's right. Their mascot's a, a, a crab. Really? Or, or a lobster. Should be a lobster. Yeah, a lo- lobster. Yeah. Uh, NHL doubleheader on ESPN. Six o'clock puck drop for Capitals Red Wings, followed by Wild and Avalanche at 8.30. Baseball about to get underway on MLB Network, if it's not already. Yeah, uh, Red Sox are on already, I think. Yeah, Red Sox, I believe it is their home opener today. Correct. Taking on the Orioles. They are celebrating the 20th anniversary of the 2004 team. Yeah, uh, some uh, some watery eyes as well as a tribute to uh, Tim Wakefield. That's right, that's right. Over the, over the board before the game. Uh, 620 on ESPN Plus and MLB Network. It is the Mets and the Braves from Atlanta. Cubs, Padres, 9 o'clock, your TBS game of the week. You'll want to stick around until the end of this one. Don't just assume the game's over after eight innings. Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? What is this in reference to? Last night's Cubs-Padres game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. John's listening. That's right. That's right. 
Don't want to trigger them. Uh, college baseball on ESPN2, number 24, Florida. Uh, visits in-state rival number 10, Florida State, at 6 o'clock at that same time, right here on 1620 The Zone. You can listen to another in-state rivalry, the Creighton Blue Jays and the Omaha Mavericks from the Tau. Now, if there's a road that connects these two, what is it? Yeah, it's, I guess. The 480 rivalry? Uh, 480. The 80 to 480 rivalry? The, the Saddle Creek Dock to Street. the Saddle Creek to coming rivalry. Yeah, I like that. The Saddle Creek to coming. That, if you're going from UNO to for, to the Chuck, we got to figure out. A you go coming to Saddle Creek, yeah. I guess as well. Uh, women's soccer, the She Believes Cup is tonight on TBS, six o'clock USA versus Canada, and finally on Netflix, Neil Brennan, Crazy Good. In his third Netflix special, Neil, who looks nothing like our boss, the comedian pokes fun at crypto, millionaire mindsets, mental health, and relationships. Great. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Connor. That is what we're watching tonight. That's the show. If you miss anything, you could find it all conveniently located on our website, 1620thezone.com. The crossover is next. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. Is your concrete cracked or uneven? Hey everyone, Coach Greg McDermott here to explain why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. Many people think they need to replace broken concrete, but repairing it provides durable protection and comes at a fraction of the cost. Everlevel provides permanent repair solutions to fix your concrete and protect it against future damage. And it all comes with a long-term transferable warranty. They offer free inspections to walk you through the entire process. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today. I have never seen this before. Hi, John with Saul's Jury and Loan. The price of gold is the highest it's ever been. Now is the time to get the best price on your broken jewelry, chains, and diamond jewelry. Saul's has been around a while, and trust us, now's the time. Saul's Jury and Loan. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees, the source by your mom's house. Is reviewing life insurance on your to-do list? Now's the perfect time to add it. A friend recently told me that securing life insurance sooner rather than later can help you lock in lower rates for years to come. So I bumped this up on my list and got it done. I called Select Quote and couldn't believe how easy and affordable life insurance is. I'm 40 and got a $500,000 policy for $16 a month. My husband's also 40 and his $500,000 policy was only $18 a month. Plus, with Select Quote same day coverage, there was no medical exam required and we were covered by the time we hung up. Knowing I have this checked off my list feels amazing, but the peace of mind knowing my family is protected feels even better. Call Select Quote 1 800 670 5151. That's 1 800 670 5151. Or go to SelectQuote.com to get your free quote today. 1 800 670 5151. Details on example rate at selectquote.com. Email us on the Equitable Bank inbox with whatever is on your mind. Zone Inbox is brought to you by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. You can get me, Gary, at 1620thezone.com. We want to hear from you.